You're watching them back on ESPN, and welcome to college football on a Thanksgiving Day weekend. Mac action between Akron and Northern Illinois from Husky Stadium here in DeKalb, Illinois. And greetings, I'm Jim Barber. This is Ryan Cavanaugh for the seniors on both sides. This is an important weekend. Akron still has a game after this, but Northern Illinois seniors, their very last game ever as a collegiate player. So how special is that? Well, there's a lot of mixed emotions because this is the culmination of a career. A lot of these guys may not play at the next level. So this game for the seniors from NIU, probably as important as any college game they've played. Good point. The Zips have a backup quarterback in Jeff Undercuffler. The good news is, though, he has a couple of receivers or veterans and Power 5 transfers. Undercuffler's taken over for the injured DJ Irons, and the best way for a new quarterback to get indoctrinated in the game is having weapons, dynamic playmakers on the outside, and he's got two of them in George and Jacques Louis. And they may wind up meeting the linebacker from Northern Illinois, the legend of one, number 11, Kyle Pugh, who was playing in his very last game ever. He is 25 years of age. He is the first and only eight-year college football player. As you look at some of these stats, what jumps out to me is a freshman. It's not listed here, but the freshmen on this football team were in the sixth grade when <laughs> Kyle Pugh went into college. Joe Moorhead, year number one at Akron. Biggest difficulty for him is we don't know how to win. But they've been in a lot of close games, and today Akron anticipating... It may have yet another one on the hands of the Huskies, who are coached by one Thomas Hammock. Hammock in year four says when the season's over, typically we would go out scouting. But this time around, we're going to be talking to players inside the locker rooms and inside the university to find out who wants to stay and who wants to go. A little bit of an exit interview process mm -hmm. there from Hammock. And, uh, you know, he's done a terrific job coming off the MAC championship last year. A really an injury riddled season for both of these programs, Jim. Take a look at Dozier 10. He saw moments ago zero. Fabian McCray, Northern Illinois, is without. Two of its best running backs who are injured and are done for the season. So, Cradle will get a chance to step up today. Strong wind going right to left. This one into the end zone. And by NCAA rules, indoctrinated a few years ago, the Huskies will start from their own 25-yard line. Number 13, Nevin Kremaskoli, starting quarterback. It's been a rotation of quarterbacks this year for the Huskies, throwing at about a 50% clip. 456 yards, five touches, and five interceptions. He is the pride of Nutcher High School in Winnetka, Illinois. It's rare to see a true freshman walk-on who ends up starting by the end of the season, but Nevin has a lot of real positive attributes, and he's making the most of his opportunities. Yes. Cradle will be his principal ball carrier, and he has dropped for a loss of one. Number 21 getting a chance to step up today. Look at these impact players. You just mentioned Cradle coming off a 97-yard performance last week. He's going to get the bulk of the carries. And to the left, Bubba Arslanian. That's the front porch of Akron's football program. And he's been uh, the outstanding linebacker, the heart and soul of this defense for several years now. Now, you were quizzing uh, administration here moments ago, Akron administration, to find out where's Bubba going to be next year and what's the, uh, what's the verdict? Well, uh, Athletic Director Charles Gunther, he said... He thinks they're going to get him back. Uh, they actually had their senior night. Bubba did not walk. He has another year of eligibility. Certainly, in my opinion, Bubba's got a real shot at playing at the next level, getting into a camp. He, you know, I spoke with their athletic or their sports information director about his ability to play special teams. Like he plays for us special teams. You need to get the ball to 35, but it's broken up at the 40, and so it's three and out very quickly for the Huskies. Good pressure from Tim Terry, the inside linebacker who got in the face of Kremaskoli. Had to throw the ball a little bit sooner than he would have liked. Linebacker out of Pittsburgh, PA, and so here are your officials today. That includes Harold Beatty, the replay communicator, and Don Brandy, who talked to Mr. Bunny prior to the game, and Harold, he will be the replay official. So quick three and out for the Huskies. 
Tony Grimes back to receive the punt. Bounces at midfield and it dies at midfield. So a punt less than 25 yards and a great start for the Zips under the direction of one undercuffler who will get a chance to put his efforts on display. DJ Ayers is out. He is injured. He is on the sidelines. He likely has a sling with him. Upper body injury suffered a few weeks ago against Eastern Michigan. Under Cuffler, the, the offense is going to look a little bit different, Jim, because DJ Irons was such a threat to run the football. Under Cuffler, a more traditional pro-style drop-back passer. So, uh, again, keep an eye on Jacques-Louis, Daniel George, who we've already talked about, and Alex Adams, who's been coming on strong as a receiver late as a late. The fake the Wiley, the throw in the flat, and the ball is dropped. Well, as soon as we highlight their outstanding receivers and mention Alex <laughs> Adams, that happens. Typical announcer jinx, don't you think? Yeah, if you believe in those things. But I'm uh, starting to. <laughs> <laughs> Second and ten. But I like what Akron's doing to get it out to them in space. Adams was, you know, just a little bit uh, too excited looking downfield before securing the football. Ball just shy of midfield at the Akron 49 and a scoreless start. Under Cuffler, three-step drop. And to the sidelines. And it'll bring up a third and short. Jack Louis, who wears 18. We mentioned the transfers are from Penn State and Pitt. So they played big-time college football. And that will help the efforts of a young quarterback, I would think. Yeah, and Alex Adams transferred in from LSU. Take a look at these guys here. Cam Wiley last week, 144 yards rushing and three touches on the ground. And Devontae O'Malley is one of the more athletic three techniques in the MAC. They're going to look to try and isolate him one-on-one -on -one in the interior. And he's one of the few that can get to the quarterback from that defensive line position. This is Daniel George on the catch, but he's not going anywhere, and he is still shy. Oh, the first down sticks. So it's going to be a fourth and one. Typically, they call this... No man's land, which means the offense will go for it. Northern Illinois wasn't having any of it. They got it uh, covered this really well. It's just a quick now route. And you see the pressure from the defensive backs coming up, making the play. They're going to go for it on fourth down. Wiley in the backfield. Wiley gets the ball. Wiley is brought down for a loss. So on senior day here in DeKalb, Illinois, the Huskies make a stand. And we'll get the football in pretty good field position beyond the 40-yard line. Just an excellent job coming up and hitting. James Esther, there's the big man in the middle. Been the standout from Cast Tech in the Detroit, Michigan area. And, and take a look right here of Esther just beats his man. That's Tony George's, the center that Esther's working on. Esther coming in with a couple of sacks and a pick, and there's an important TFL. On fourth down. Second series on offense for the Huskies. And the fake and the throw to the sidelines. Well designed play. Yeah, you got Casper Rukowitz uh, just coming across in the play action. I love that call on first down as well, Jim. You know, they're looking for run, run, and you get Kremiscoli out on the edge. He's an athletic quarterback, throws a nice ball on the run. Rutkowitz brings it in. Rutkowitz already has a long touchdown reception this year. And once again, throwing on the flat. So the tight end gets a catch on that play. Make that uh, a fullback, Brock Lappy. And he is a walk on. A lot of walk ons on both sides of the field today. And now we have a second down coming up. And three after the pickup of seven. Nice play defensively, right on the defensive line there. Without Ontario Brown today in the backfield and without Harrison Whaley, they're going to run into Verante Holt a lot. That was a beautiful play by Holt. Again, the transfer from Wyoming, both defensive linemen, uh, lines thus far have gotten good penetration. And, you know, you can't have those negative plays when you have the success move in the football. But look at Holt, just beats his man. Beautiful job. Brings us to a third and one. Try to continue this drive. Straight ahead football, first down to the 30-yard line. 
Cradle's going to be the guy today because without Brown and without Harrison Whaley, who are likely done for the season, he's got a big load to carry, and he'll be helped out by number 10, Billy Dozier. And also they're going to bring a, a freshman into the mix, 25, Christian Nash. There's Bubba Arslany, number 27, getting up from the pile. He has over 300 career tackles. 177 solo tackles, reverse action here. How about this, a little end around activity. Modest gain on the play, maybe four yards, bring up a second and six. KJ Martin coming up in run support. Nobody fooled on that, uh, that action. Huskies now set up with two wideouts here on second down. Nice job coming up. It was Thompson, actually, Nate Thompson, who came up to make the play. Second, uh, Thompson is a safety, but he's really bringing the pressure uh, against the run game here, coming up at the line of scrimmage. Back to Cradle, cuts back up, and is short of the first down, but not by much. As Jaden Cradle picks up four yards, it'll be third and two. Nate Thompson in on another tackle. Nine tackles last week. He's off to a good start this afternoon. One of the things they like about Cradle, who carries the ball again here, is his vision. Yep. Yeah, you know, uh, it's, that generally is one of the, especially for a true freshman, having the patience and the vision, those are always two intangibles from the running back position that aren't that easy to learn. You know, you need game reps, especially when you elevate to the next level like you are here. The speed of the game, sometimes for a first-year player, it's hard to get acclimated. But Cradle, as you mentioned, the vision is one of his strong suits. So a fresh set of downs. Northern Illinois in the red zone. Another end around play. They're going to try to run wide so far here in the field. And on that play, 27. Able to carry for the Huskies, and that is Kayshawn Pipkin, the wide receiver. Out of Indianapolis. It's just straight. Jet motion, hands it off, fakes it to the running back. And the defensive end of that side, Jim, he's got to widen out when you see that motion because he's getting it at full speed. And if you're uh, standing still, he's got an advantage. They run the same action, this time give it to the running back. Straight up the middle on a first down carry. It'll be first and goal from around the 10-yard line is Jaden Cradle. Picking up the slack for Ontario Brown and Harrison Whaley. And so far, so good for the Huskies, who will go quickly. And one thing you hear about Northern Illinois is they'll, they'll present some eye candy out there. And when you talk to Akron's defensive coordinator, Tim Tibisar, uh, Tibisar was telling us, you've got to be aware of all that and not go for every fake as Bame comes up to make the tackle there for the Akron's, for the Zips. Yeah, they, they will run a lot of the same stuff just out of different formations and they as you can see heavily rely on motion and you can get a read from the defense what kind of coverage they're in when you when you use motion like that northern illinois also does it to to it, it actually just increases your playbook mm -hmm. little rollout here for kremis coley to the end zone incomplete bringing up third and seven by the way when we get to halftime and it'll be a while Ryan and I are going to get a spirited debate as to who the top four should be the college football playoff. And Michigan has just taken the lead on Ohio State, 17-13, late first half. I almost heard the groans from Columbus when they scored the last touchdown. Well, I also picked Ohio State in the top four, so that's my groan too. <laughs> <laughs> I know you got, I know you got Michigan, so. <laughs> well, it wouldn't be fun if we if we picked the same team. We can't you know? switch in midstream either. I think that's illegal. Third and goal from the seven. Gramascoli looking to his left will keep. Is that a design play? Doesn't matter. He stopped inside the five. Bring us to a fourth and goal, and the Huskies will set up for field goal. Yeah, they brought Lynch in, so definitely, you know, he's the running quarterback. They'll, yeah, my mistake on that. No, they they just snuck him in, but um, yeah, generally when Lynch is in there, they're going to be running the football. Mm -hmm. Isaiah Hatfield will snap. Tom Foley will hold, and John Richardson, 10 of 11 on field goals this year, will kick from the 22-yard lines and the left hash. And on senior day, 
The Huskies draw first blood. Fast moving first quarter under seven minutes. Three nothing in favor of NIU. To build the all new Honda CRV hybrid, you took everything you love about the CRV and kicked it up a notch with excellent fuel efficiency and greater power. For a CRV unlike any before, adventure confidently with the most fuel efficient full line automaker in America. The all new CRV and CRV Hype, part of the Honda line of rugged vehicles. When you're ready to go, but static says, whoa. Try bounce lasting fresh dryer sheets. More freshness, more softness, less static, less wrinkles. Yeah, it's the sheet. New bounce lasting fresh dryer sheets. It's the sheet. A John Richardson 22 yard field goal. Has put the Huskies on the scoreboard first three nothing. Ryan Cavanaugh, Jim Barber from Husky Stadium. Here in the campus of Northern Illinois, it is Thanksgiving break for many of the students. Well, lots of family members and friends have piled in to see the last game for a number of Huskies, including Kyle Pugh at age 25, his last game arrived on campus back in 2015, the senior linebacker. That's a long time ago. Yeah, and I think due to COVID and everything that came along with it, uh, this could be wishful thinking. I hope nobody ever plays eight years again, you know? Because yeah. Fair catch being called for here and the football at the 25-yard line. Do you think Kyle has looked in the NCAA maybe getting a ninth or tenth year? Time out on the field. I don't know. I mean, that's I already a, know a the long answer time. Been <laughs> <laughs> able to stretch it out to eight. Great player, by the way. 3 nothing. our score. Time to step away for a moment. We know you have to drive through the mud. But if you want to reach the rainbow, brave the desert before you find the oasis. Conquer the mountain to see how far your dreams can take you. The all new CRV and CRV Hype, part of the Honda line of rugged vehicles. Cheese. I was feeling cute. I might delete these later. Don't delete them. I look good. Crop yourself out. But my hair does look amazing. Cheese it. Official sponsor of the college football playoff. We mentioned earlier it is senior day for the Huskies. Their final home game. Their final game of the 2022 season. Nice special ceremony prior to the game, which including number 11, Kyle Pugh, and 83, Liam Sorhan. And a total of 12 Husky seniors playing in their very last game. Yeah, you mentioned Kyle Pugh coming out. He's got 241 career tackles. Mm. Uh, and more impressively, I think, is he's going to leave NIU with three degrees. How amazing is that? Yeah, making the most of your, of your time, that's for sure. Huskies aren't the only team that are running in arounds today as Alex Adams. A little pitch here runs to the far side of the field. So we see both teams using a little bit of motion here to try to mix things up early in the game. I like when the, they get the running, uh, the wide receivers involved in the running game because, as you mentioned, changing the picture, it's asking more questions that the defense has to answer. And also, it's an easy, nice, easy way to get your playmakers the ball in space. I mean, think about it, too, with the quarterbacks that are inexperienced, although they've seen a little bit of playing time. Making solid throws like that, getting your receivers in end around plays takes a little more pressure off them, I would imagine. You know, it's like a basketball player. You know, you, you want to see the ball go in. They always say that about shooters. If you see the ball go in, the next shot, the next shot, it gets easier. And for a quarterback, you 
as you can notice right now, under Cuffler, most of the passes are not downfield. They're short. Now to the flat, and that was, was it it picked, picked off? off. It is picked off. Intended for Daniel George. Two Huskies back defending on the play. The ruling on the field is an interception. Jordan Gandy appears to get the pick. Yeah, it was tipped, and then Gandy comes up and brings it in. It's just a little bit underthrown, and you see uh, that the inside player, I can't see what pick up that. It might have been Jaden Dolphin, the linebacker, who came over and undercut that route, tipped it, and Gandy, the one who's there to intercept it. And I was just commenting how under Cuffler, it's been more horizontal passes, the quick outs, and the first time they try to throw it down. The ruling on the field is an interception. The play is under further review. So we're going to take this one up to the booth just to make sure if, in fact, that's exactly what had happened. Well, Gandy from this angle appears to have the pick, and we'll have that either confirmed or overruled. And I want to correct myself, Jim. It was Jay Sean Prophet who uh, came underneath the route and tipped it, and then Gandy made the, well, what we think is an interception. Yeah. And as a, you know, as a quarterback, when you see this, you are, uh, you know, he's reading, but sometimes you get locked in on your receiver and who's covering him, and you don't see the inside coverage. So while he's locked in on his wideout, he doesn't see Profit come underneath the pass. And again, there's just certain things that you just need to get reps and get used to that. Um, an undercut for last week when he came in for DJ After review, Irons. The ruling on the field of an interception stands. First down, Northern Illinois. So give Gandy full credit on that with a little help from one of his other backers. And Gandy, well, he's a uh, former walk-on playing in his final game today, senior. Yep, came from uh, local here in DeKalb High School. Transfers from South Dakota State. There's Coach Moorhead. I asked Joe earlier in the week, uh, why Akron? And, you know, he said there were other opportunities for me, but I've got family from the Pittsburgh area that's nearby. Get a chance to watch my son play a D3 level of football. And uh, I like what Akron offers. And uh, A.D. Charles was sharing with us earlier today how many former Power 5 coaches they've got at different levels of their athletic department. Yeah, four four Power 5 coaches in different athletic programs, and he's just uh, saying it. Akron's a destination. It's a landing spot. Yes. And, uh, and Moorhead, yeah, his son is a freshman quarterback in the area. Of course, Joe Moorhead himself was a standout quarterback at Fordham. He built the Fordham program as a coach. On a check down pass complete for a modest gain inside the 45-yard line, but Thomas Coley doing a nice job not seeing any of his options there and finally being able to land somebody as the catch is made by Liam Soren. Yeah, Sorahan, the, the senior, and sometimes when you catch the ball, it's like he's trying to go down, Ooh. and then this is where you just take some un, uh, unnecessary extra hits by being held up. And, of course, Akron's holding them up because they're trying to get the football yeah. out. I think you might have seen him even motion to his head, and we have a medical observer, by the way, on location, just in case there are questions. Quarterback keep. Lynch, the backup quarterback in the game and carrying the football. That's another tackle by Nate Thompson, 16 for Akron, who is just flying up the field when he reads run. Fourth and short here, and Kremiscoli comes back out. They're going to leave the offense on the field. Well, that's interesting, too. That's almost a Lynch designed play on a fourth and one, is it not? Yeah, well, they, well, now it's, it's going to be fourth and three. Fourth so. and three, yeah. They ran the Lynch play on third, didn't get enough, so they bring back the passing quarterback. Three receivers to the left side. That's where Kremis Coley is looking. Easy toss, easy throw. First down inside the Akron 25-yard line. Rutkowitz with the reception. Casper has six touchdown catches this year. Had a huge game earlier this year against Miami. Four catches for 80. They had the trips, tight bunch, and Rutkowitz was the inside receiver, and so commonly when you do that, the outside guys slant over. It's a rub route, and Rutkowitz gets open. Nice pass by Kremiscoli. 
Pretty hard to defend, I would think, on a fourth and short when you've got trips to the left side and you've got receivers bunched up like that, and you only need to pick up less than five yards. You know, defensively, that that's a challenge. The challenge is, are you, are you, is it a matchup, man-to-man -man zone? So if you're on the outside, you know somebody's coming out there. You know, there's always somebody over the middle, somebody to the right, and somebody to the left. And sometimes you'll just say, hey, whichever guy comes out, one, two, or three, I'll take him. Because if you're playing man-to-man, -man, you got to work across four people. Well, Muscoli had to get rid of that quickly. Going to bring up a third down. Using his tight ends where necessary as Sorhan makes his second catch of the game, playing in his final day as a Husky. You see Ontavious Fish come up and make the tackle there, number 35. This is a physical football game. Both these teams are hitting, and you're seeing that reflected in some of these receivers asking to come out every time they make a reception. Sorhan, second catch on this drive, and both times he took some shots. Need to pick up seven for the first down to continue to drive. The line to gain is the 18 of Akron. Huskies leading late first quarter, three to nothing. Kremaskoli out to the flat again. It'll be short. So now we get to a fourth down. Tackle made by Jalen Hooks, 29. Huskies last time were a little shorter and attempted a John Richardson field goal. Right now they've got all hands on deck to go for it here. Yeah, this would be a 39-yard field goal, very manageable, but there's Coach Hammock. He's not looking for threes. He's looking for sixes and sevens. He'll send two receivers to the near side, needing to pick up four yards on fourth down with a buck 45 remaining in the first quarter. Now trips to the right for Kremaskoli. Running to his right. Looking down the field and carrying. Got the first down. Well, we mentioned a lot about Justin Lynch and his running ability. Really on the field is a first Nevin down. Kremaskoli, 18 years of age, able to launch for the first down, and the Huskies keep this drive going. Well, that's a gritty play, and you can see he sees exactly where the sticks are, puts his shoulder down, and gets just enough for the line to gain. Kremaskoli, Coach Hammock, was very complimentary of his, tr uh, of his poise and composure, said he doesn't flinch. Well, at one time, there have been three other quarterbacks starting for the Huskies this year, in addition to Nevin Kremaskoli. And I asked Thomas Hammock during our conference call, what would it have been like if Rocky Lombardi had stayed healthy? And I kind of grinned a bit. <laughs> and Rocky started the season, then gave way to Ethan Hampton, then to Justin Lynch, and now to Kremaskoli, who's throwing for a touchdown here. Incomplete. Leave us with a third and seven. Let's go back to the graphic, though, and let's kind of relive what this season's been like. Most unusual to have four different quarterbacks shuffling in and out for a team. Well, it's just hard to have consistency. When you have a different person in front of that huddle um, and calling signals for you, and all these guys, they bring a little something a little bit different to the table. Of course, Justin Lynch is primarily a the running quarterback, Rocky Lombardi. It's just so difficult where he's been at Michigan State, the number of games he's played in, to replace that sort of experience. Here come the Zips with a blitz. Kremaskoli gets rid of it the last minute. It'll be incomplete. And that'll bring on John Richardson for a late first quarter attempted field goal. But Akron came with full guns a blazing there, and that forced Kremaskoli to get rid of it rather quickly. So John Richardson... Attempting his second field goal of this game. This one a little further than the last one of 22. This will be from 33. And a chance to put the Huskies up 6-0. Only a straight-on shot for him. Oof. John Richardson now 2-for-2 two two and 12-of-13 on the season. Now with 20 seconds to go in the first quarter, the Huskies expand out of lead 6-0, and we will step aside and come back with the final 20 seconds of this quarter.
when you're ready to go. But Static says, whoa. Try Bounce Lasting Fresh Dryer Sheets. More freshness, more softness, less static, less wrinkles. Yeah, it's the sheet. New Bounce Lasting Fresh Dryer Sheets. It's the sheet. Cheese. I was feeling cute. I might delete these later. Don't delete them. I look good. Prop yourself out. But my hair does look amazing. Cheese it. Official sponsor of the college football playoff. Devin Kremis Coley likely on conversation with the OC Eric Isis of Northern Illinois. But that's Rocky Lombardi to his right. Rocky has served as a, well, kind of a assistant coach, Thomas Hammock was telling us, and a, and a good one at that. Yeah, Rocky comes in every day with ne Nevin Kremiscoli, works, uh, goes over film, goes over the plays. Uh, Rocky's been an extra set of eyes. And he actually said Rocky's been spending more time in the facility now than when he was able to play because he's really taken Nevin Kremiscoli under his wing. And as you mentioned, he's almost like another coach. And Coach Hammock said, the guys on the team don't even realize how much time Rocky spends with Correction Nevin, ball, Nevin and the other quarterbacks the bringing them down. along. And Rocky Lombardi has another year of eligibility. You think when he's done, he will coach? You know, I think this year's experience is going to give him a real push in that direction because, you know, that's the real sign of a coach is being able to watch the development and play a role in the development of your players and he's doing that right now for Nevin Kremiscoli. Under Cuffler with a first down throw. Jacques Louis with the catch. Akron gets the move to chains and that could be the last play of the quarter unless the Zips get to the line of scrimmage and snap it quickly but they will head to the sidelines and we will head to the second quarter. No touchdowns to show as of late but a couple of John Richardson field goals from 22 and 33 yards out. That's the scoring in our game on Senior Day here in DeKalb, Illinois. The Huskies have the only pick of the day, and they also have a six-point lead. When you're ready to go, but Static says, whoa. Try Bounce Lasting Fresh Dryer Sheets. More freshness, more softness, less static, less wrinkles. Yeah, it's the sheet. New Bounce Lasting Fresh Dryer Sheets. It's the sheet. You feel the cheesiest, but the chain puts the extra cheese on the cracker. It's here. Look at this. It's the cheesiest chain. This is the cheesiest day of my life. This takes spinning cheese to a whole new level. Cheese it official sponsor of the college football playoff. Welcome back, Akron football. To start the second quarter. Ryan Cavanaugh, the pride and joy of John Carroll University. Jim Barber with you. On E3 today, first half numbers, Akron has not managed anything on the ground. And really, in terms of total yards, not much offense either side so far. No, that's true. And when you look at the negative one rushing yards for Akron, the real problem is you have to run the ball to get yards. They only yep. had one carry. Cam Wiley, one carry for negative one yards in that first quarter. Here's Wiley carrying the football, running off left tackle and picking up a yard. Billy Fessler is the offensive coordinator up in the booth. Joe Moorhead, the head coach, who actually was part of Akron's team back in the, the 2000s for a period of five years. Yep, familiar with the area. They make it sound so long ago, the 2000s, well, 04 <laughs> to 08, to be specific. <laughs> Second down. Officially a pickup of two. Jeff Undercuffler, backup quarterback to G.J. Irons, who's done for the year. Undercuffler, down the middle of the field, has got a man. And inside the 15-yard line, Alex Adams, who dropped one earlier. He didn't drop that one, though. First down, zips, and they're on the move. And what a nicely thrown ball and catch. 
Yeah, he sees Adams just one-on-one, -on -one, beats, beats his man on the post, comes back and catches it. Adams coming off a real nice performance against Eastern Michigan, six catches, 102 yards, and one touchdown. And here he is again. He's a leading receiver with regard to touchdowns for Akron. He has, he has six on the season. That was good for 56. Now Wiley, straight ahead running. And that big offensive line for Akron. Yeah, you see Brian Kilbane, Nate Williams, both a couple 300-pounders. Here's Kyle Pugh. Eight seasons with the Northern Illinois Huskies. Likely finishing up the Husky career today. Second and eight. Touchdown ties the game here early in the second quarter. Under Cuffler as Adams sets in on the slot. Wiley tries to break loose and carries to the 15, brings up a third down for the Akron Zips. They have played a number of tightly contested games this year, and unfortunately, like Northern Illinois, have fallen on the wrong side. One of the tale of two seasons for both of these teams. And Coach Hammock said the difference between last year and this year is they won all the close games last year and they're losing them this year. But that's the Mac for you. It's very unpredictable and very t usually tightly contested games. Sips need to pick up seven here. Blitz coming. They pick up the blitz under Cuffler throws and it's broken up. Daniel George was the intended receiver. So now we get to fourth down. Let's see what the Zips decide to do, and they are going to go for a short field goal. It's under Cuffler's back and way. He's thrown off his back foot, and he just short arms it. They had what they wanted. He had George, but he's got to throw that out in front of him. See, it's on his back hip, and that allows the defender to get his hand on it and knock the football away. Broken up nicely by number two, the corner, Javon Beard. So now Kyle Bowman will snap. Noah Getman will hold, and... Corey Smeagol will be out for the field goal. This uh, 33 yards to match John Richardson's moments ago. So to, to this point, a bunch of three-pointers. Two for the Huskies and one for the Zips. And our score is 6-3 in favor of Northern Illinois. Here's the play of 56 yards from under Cuffler to Adams. That set up the short field goal by Corey Smiggle. At Honda, we know you have to drive through the mud. If you want to reach the rainbow, brave the desert before you find the oasis. Conquer the mountain to see how far your dreams can take you. The all-new CRV and CRV Hype, part of the Honda line of rugged vehicles. Man, I make this cheesiest chain look good. I'm still feeling the cheesiest. You are a wheel of cheese. Cheese it, official sponsor of the college football playoff. Adams had that terrific catch moments ago from under Cuffler as he puts his arm around his quarterback there. Why not? Teamed up for a 56-yard play that set up a field goal. And Jacques Louis, Alex Adams, and Daniel George at the big three. And that's one of the reasons that the Zips have been in a number of tight games without the two-star running backs in Brown and Whaley. Yeah, there's a lot of talent at the wide receiver position. Of course, DJ Irons, the quarterback who went out injured against Eastern Michigan, a real veteran of this program. He'll be back under Cuffler's back next year. There's going to be a healthy quarterback competition. Yep. Fair catch was called for, so the Huskies will start this drive for the 25. Because of the win today, nobody's been able to kick off and send this one outside the city limits. So a number of fair catches being called for. The Huskies are back on offense with Nevin Kremiscoli. First down at the 25. Directing play here, number 13. Kremiscoli started the year sixth on the quarterback depth chart. Sixth. 
And here he is as a starter. Today, Amana 6 of 10 for 43 yards. Did have a scamper for a first down. It kept the drive alive back in the first quarter. Jaden Cradle having to pick up the slack today for Ontario Brown, who had seven touchdowns on the year, was seventh in the MAC, and Harrison Whaley, who torched Ball State for three scores earlier in the year and 230 yards. You lose that dynamic duo. That's tough. Well, Jaden Cradle, he had 11 carries in the first quarter. He's up to 12 now. And uh, a couple weeks ago against Western Michigan, he carried it 36 times, mm. which was the most since Jordan Lynch, Justin's old, older brother, uh, back in 2012 in the MAC championship. And what was that question to John McKay many years ago at USC when O.J. Simpson carried the ball for 30-plus? And they asked him why did he why did he do that with him? He said, well, the ball's not heavy. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard that, but... That's great. But the hits are, you know, that's yeah. the real oh, yes. problem. <laughs> you know, it's not carrying it. It's the people trying to hit you when you are carrying it. That's that's where the difficulty comes in. Lynch after the run. Now sets up a third and seven for Kremiscoli. They pick up the blitz, and he overshoots the receiver, who was well covered at the 35-yard line just the same. So it's a quick three and out. By the way, uh, McKay, a lot of great quips for the L.A. media back in the day, and when he eventually went to Tampa and they had that long losing streak, they, he was asked about his team's execution after the game, and he said he was in favor of it. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he was a card, man. <laughs> I'd say so. That is funny. Joe Moorhead, head coach of the Zips, first year, but not the first time around with the Akron program. Or being a head coach. Spent no. Time at Mississippi State. Is there a head coach? Beautiful punt with the wind. Beautiful punt. And it's going to land inside the 20. So Tom Foley with a dandy. And we'll step aside again with the score remaining at 6-3 in favor of the team in red. To build the all-new Honda CRV Hybrid, took everything you love about the CRV and kicked it up a notch with excellent fuel efficiency and greater power for a CRV unlike any before. Adventure confidently with the most fuel efficient full line automaker in America. The all new CRV and CRV Hype, part of the Honda line of rugged vehicles. When you're ready to go, but static says, whoa. Try Bounce Lasting Fresh Dryer Sheets. More freshness, more softness, less static, less wrinkles. Yeah, it's the sheet. New Bounce Lasting Fresh Dryer Sheets. It's the sheet. You're watching Mac Football on ESPN, Northern Illinois 6, Akron 3. And a reminder to watch the 2022 Rocket Mortgage MAC Championship game next Saturday at noon on ESPN. It will be Toledo from the West against Ohio of the East. Three Mac Championships for the Rockets. Last appearance 2017 and for Ohio. What a surge this year. From three and five to a league best seven to one in the division. Tim Albin has done a terrific job with them this year, and of course, Curtis Rourke going down injured has has uh, made some necessary changes for them. A lot of quarterbacks going down yeah. injured this year in the MAC. Gabbert. Finn. Here's, Cam, here's Cam Wiley running wide and picking up close to a first down. He'll be good for nine. Has been an unusual year for quarterbacks, but thanks to the beauty of the scholarships and the fact that a lot of kids are looking to find mid-majors to play, there have been some uh, solid backups. Yeah, well, look no further than Undercuffler, who's performing well here today, as well as the litany of backups from Northern Illinois that have filled in since Rocky Lombardi went down. Yeah, we think when Nevascoli was sixth on the depth chart, a litany is right. 
<laughs> Second and short. Fake to Wiley, throw to the flat for the uh, flat for the yard, and I don't think they got it. Daniel yeah. George on the catch. Well, typically that's a short design play for a run up the middle or off tackle, but defense nicely by the Huskies out on the uh, on the boundary. Yeah, well, they just got underneath. That's the you know you need to get that offense alignment out there uh, a little bit sooner. It's Kamari Landers, and he just doesn't get there in time. And that allows Nick Rattan up there yeah. to make the stop. Yep. So again, a yard needed on third and one. Cam Wiley back with undercuffler will carry the football. And he has got enough. Needed to pick up one, got two. And the Zips will continue this drive moments into the second quarter, actually about five and a half minutes into the quarter. Tough yards for Cam Wiley. But that's what you got. Sometimes you need a yard. You just got to put your head down. You got to keep the legs driving. And Coach Moorhead's got to be happy with that effort from Cam Wiley. Billy Fessler, as we mentioned, the off offensive coordinator, calls some of the plays from the booth. Working with undercuffler with time. Throwing down the middle of the field, and that one is incomplete. And a pass interference call is going to be coming up as Jacques Louis was the intended receiver. Now the question is, which side of the ball is it going to be assessed? Holding. Number 29. Defense. 10-yard penalty. And in fact, Automatic it's going to be a holding down. call, actually. On 29. Marion Knighton. So Marion Knighton picks up the holding call. And moves the football up to the 37. Which is a little better than pass interference that oftentimes we see in the pros when it's the yardage of some significance. I'd like Undercuffler taking these shots downfield, though. Shockey, Jacques Louis got behind Knighton. And Undercuffler throws a nice deep ball. Now on the rollout, and he's got nobody there and wisely just tosses it to the ground. It's almost like a veteran move there, too, by a kid who has not seen a whole lot of football. No intentional grounding because the quarterback was out of the tackle box. He threw it at the feet of Clyde Price as well, running True. back. You're going to see number 20 in the game, and that's where he throws it. Uh, now, of course, Price is pass blocking, so he would have never been able to catch that football, but it's in the area. And you, as you said, a real veteran move there from Undercuffler in his first collegiate start. Was he out of the box, by the way? Out of the yeah, he was. Okay. He was, yep. Under Cuffler again in the middle of the field. And he's starting to throw a rocket to the 50-yard line. And he, Tony Grimes. Yeah, he's uh, he's not done. He said, hey, nobody touched me. But uh, they're going to rule him down. But up in midfield, and under Cuffler right now is throwing a nice football here, Ryan. Yeah, what I like is his, uh, his ability to be on target while changing his arm angle. Window to slip it into. And now I see what Tony Grimes is talking about. Sure. He's saying that his his knee never hit the ground. He was on a Husky defender. Fake to Wiley and one hop to the sidelines. Intended for George would be second and 10. Michigan has regained the lead on Ohio State. Early third quarter, 24 to 10. There have been a slew of long touchdown passes on both ends and we'll debate whether the loser of this game winds up in the college football playoff, we'll do that at halftime. Georgia has extended its lead over Georgia Tech 20 to 7, but Clemson's having problems with South Carolina by 2 at 8.18 to go in the third. I have to switch my pick on that one. <laughs> South Carolina is, uh, you know, you only get one mulligan, Jim. Yeah, okay? that's so true. I'll give you one. Wide open to the sidelines. Jacques Louis with a catch, and he was all by himself. Another Akron first down, and right now pitch and catch. All that special time that Undercuffler has spent with his receivers after practices paying dividends. Yeah, this is a far hash sideline route. Jacques Louis, Shockey Jacques Louis, rather. He uh, leads the MAC in receptions per game at six and a half, adding to those totals. Had a really nice season. The transfer from Pitt. By way of Fort Myers, Florida, Shockey Jacques-Louis. Play action, undercuffler going for six. 
intended for Alex Adams and another penalty flag thrown. So right now the whiteouts are having their way with the secondary in Northern Illinois. Yeah, that time it's profit number 24, but you know they're allowing the prior to the pass. Holding number 24 defense, 10 yard penalty, automatic first down. That's our official Ron Hudson. Excuse me there. No, I'm sorry. They're allowing the, the Akron Zips fairly easily to get behind them. I mean, this is the third play already where Adams is running behind one of the defensive backs. Pretty good ball by Undercuffler, too. You know, frankly, that's a good decision by Profit because if you don't hold him, that's six points. And there was very little argument from 24. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't, it, there was no throwing my hands up. It was, okay, you caught me. Yeah, kind of nice to accept a penalty now and then, right? Even though you don't want to. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's rare. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's I'm rare. sure. Fresh set of downs, and here's Wiley into that second line of defense. He is brought down at the 14-yard line after a pickup of 20, and here come the Zips with a chance to tie or take the lead. Wiley's been a touchdown monger lately, three last week. He had more, and coming into that game, he only had uh, two rushing touchdowns, but this is a nice piece of running. C.J. Brown, terrific sophomore defensive back for Northern Illinois. He's had an outstanding season. He's had 72 tackles coming in, a pick, forced a fumble, recovered a fumble. Now from the 14 of the Huskies. And back to Wiley. Juking his way toward the boundary here for the pickup of four. It's a really nice play by Nick Routine chasing down Wiley. It looked as if Wiley, as he was extending that left arm, the stiff arm was going to get the edge and routine with that uh, just a great great effort to track him down from behind and shut it down routine had a, a pick for touchdown in the game at Akron just a few years back one of the few remaining players from the last time they met in a significant game and at the top of the screen so they've emptied it out yeah right okay coach Moorhead's gonna take a timeout they had an uncovered receiver timeout Akron, their first of the half. Akron this takes a timeout. We'll take it with them with timeout. six and a half to go in the first half. When you're ready to go, but static says, whoa. Try bounce lasting fresh dryer sheets. More freshness, more softness, less static, less wrinkles. Yeah, it's the sheet. New bounce lasting fresh dryer sheets. It's the sheet. When you're ready to go, but static says, whoa. Try bounce lasting fresh dryer sheets. More freshness, more softness, less static, less wrinkles. Yeah, it's the sheet. New bounce lasting fresh dryer sheets. It's the sheet. Coming up at halftime in a couple of words, a lot. <laughs> you want to join us as Ryan and I get together to pick our college football playoff top four. And I may be changing my mind because this Michigan Ohio State game is going back and forth and I may uh <laughs> They may change uh, plans here and put them both in, regardless of who wins. First half highlights and stats as well. Still looking for our first touchdown in this game, but the Zips are right on the doorstep. On a second and six. Yeah. Oh, we're going to do a direct snap. How about this? Wiley in the Wildcat. Penalty flag on the play. That will be a little frustrating if this is on the offense right after a timeout to set up the design Wildcat call. Ball start. Number 78. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Second down. So you played this game. How does that happen after a timeout and you set yourself up for a play? Well, it's just I don't know who they who they called it on the offensive line. I think it was 78 Kilbane. Yeah, Brian Kilbane. Yeah. Um, you know. They, they totally scrapped what they were going to do because they were empty, and then they come out, and they have the motion in the backfield to uh, give Wiley a direct snap. And 
Sometimes guys just jump off sides. Mm -hmm. Second and 11. Oh boy. This is going to be a touchdown for the Zips. Bullet throw to Daniel George from Jeff Undercuffler. We have our first touchdown of the game, and Akron has the lead. This ball was thrown. Take a look at the receivers not even looking when the ball's thrown. And then he just peels off, and the the, uh, the defenders, you know, there was another receiver heading to the corner of the end zone, and it was as if both Husky defenders took off after him, leaving Daniel George all alone, catches it, takes it into the end zone, and they are an extra point away from taking a three-point lead here. Corey Smigel on for that extra point. So the first touchdown of the game is a touchdown pass from Undercuffler to Daniel George, and we highlighted both George and Shockey Jacques Louis in the beginning, and there's good reason, and maybe there's good reason why a quarterback spent some time after practice with receivers to get on the same page. Well, that's something that they've been doing. DJ Irons did earlier in the year with all these receivers, and under Cuffler now, they put the extra reps in, and it looks as if these guys have been playing with under Cuffler all season. Yes. It's a very good point as George found himself wide open. You know, the, the old saying, you don't get better at something by not doing it. And the only way you can is to get those reps in. And I can't stress enough, with, when you have a quarterback and receivers, the only way you grow that familiarity and understanding where your quarterback likes the ball, where does this receiver like the ball to be thrown to him, is by the extra work in practice, after practice, in the offseason. That was the second catch. I think thir uh, third catch for Daniel George of the game. Now 16 yards and that touchdown reception. It's making us look good. Yes, you always want to be able to have the guys in the beginning of the show sparkle. Because then you can make reference to it how many times. That's our first, but there'll be many more. Yes. Just yeah. reminding everybody how intelligent we are, I think, yes. is what's going on, Jim. Correct? It's the first run back on a kickoff. Ooh, and good field hit. position for the Huskies past the 30-yard line. There's a flag on the play. Yeah, it's number 10, Billy Dozier returned that one. He's the uh, second running back, along with Jaden uh, Cradle for Northern Illinois. Again, Ron Hudson is our referee today in this Mid-American Conference crew winding up the season. sorting out going on down there. Well, huh? The suspense is killing me. How about you? <laughs> you know, when this happens, it's always interesting. It's got to be on, like, where are they spotting it? Where was the penalty at? Sure. There are fouls on both teams. Offside. Or that. <laughs> Kicking team, number 17. During the return, holding. Return team, number 23. Those fouls will offset. We will kick off again. Well, I guess there was good reason for the sorting out process that was going on down there. Yes. Offsides on a kickoff, you know, I've often thought, like, is it really, an, is there an advantage? Like, let's just let that one go. No, I don't think you know? so. <laughs> but I guess there's rules for a reason. Yes. As one college coach told me there are rules, so people can try to reinvent the ways to get around the rules. This <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is all like... part of the competitiveness, I think. Billy Dozier is deep. Fabian McCray, who wears zero, also back to return for the Huskies. You can see that they're kicking right into the wind, Jim. And, uh, you know, the deep, the deep men right now are only at the 13 and 14 yard line. Yes, yeah, not very deep, actually. Not at all. And Dozier is going to let that go out of bounds wisely. And so that will return the football to the 35. It's a good move by the return man. Free kick out of bounds. Number 36, kicking team. Kind Ball of tempting to, uh, yard line, to handle down. that, but had he been tackled back at the 13, would have lost some 25 yards here. So instead, good position for the Huskies. 6-19 remaining first half 
and they're down by four. Devin Kramerskoli with a little help from Justin Lynch, quarterback for the Huskies today. Jaden Cradle has become the principal running back, and he is behind quarterback Kramerskoli. And he gets the call, and he gets a yard. Tim Terry making his second tackle of the game uh, from oh his will linebacker spot. And you see Cradle. Oh, man, this isn't good. Time out on the field from injury to the defense. On a team that's already lost two running backs. At Honda, we know you have to drive through the mud. If you want to reach the rainbow. Brave the desert before you find the oasis. Conquer the mountain to see how far your dreams can take you. The all-new CRV and CRV Hybrid, part of the Honda line of rugged vehicles. Cheesiest chain for the cheesiest cheese. Give me that. You don't need it. To be the cheesiest, gotta snatch that chain. Wait, what? How'd you? We need another chain. Cheese it. Official sponsor of the college football playoff. The story of the season for Northern Illinois football, injuries, and yet another one to another running back, Jaden Cradle, the freshman running back out of Columbus, Georgia. Tim Terry comes in on a blitz, number five, and he just uh, tackles and rolls up on the back of the leg of Cradle. And right away you can see him as, he's being as he was helped off the field during the break, but he, right away he reached for his lower body. That means the importance of the receivers carries even more significance as that one was defended well. How about the effort by Bubba Arslani at number 27? This is just leaving it out on the field. That ball was tipped up in the air and Bubba took off, laid out, almost got it. What a tremendous athlete Bubba Arslani is, not only in addition to football, but he was a two-time state placer, third and sixth in high school wrestling. Take a look at this effort from 27. Look how far away he is, Jim, and he almost gets there. He also was an All-State catcher on the baseball field. A pass intended for Shamar Thornton, bringing up a third and nine. This one up in the air and up to grabs, and the Zips have got it. And look at the sidelines, Curtis Harper, who may have gotten his first interception ever, and the celebration is as if the game just ended. Look at that. Unbelievable. I love football, man, especially in this league. <laughs> They just exploded on that sidelines. Yeah, they absolutely did. This is the second consecutive pass from Kremiscoli that gets tipped. And it's, ooh, I couldn't, it almost looked like it hit one of the Northern Illinois linemen in the back of the helmet. Ricocheted straight up, straight up into the air. And here, take a look at this ball. It's gonna hit number 79, Lampy. Right there, or Lippy wow. rather, straight up in the air. What a carom. Curtis Harper showing incredible athleticism for a man who's 295 pounds. And as you said, the party got, uh, on the sideline of the Zips <laughs> got started when Harper picked it off. I'll tell you what, if uh, Akron wins this game, it's going to be the legend of Curtis Harper. <laughs> and, and Harper not only had the, the intelligence after making the catch uh, to secure the ball but he started running toward the goal line it was like it's my chance man listen big man scores are one of a kind and harper wanted yep. to have his moment so a lot to play for even if the bowl situation is not on the line for either team these guys are playing like it on both sides yeah, zips will have another game left by the way next friday in buffalo yeah that's a uh a redo a makeup game yes. from when you know, the, the Browns were playing the Bills. That got moved to Ford Field in Detroit. And then uh, they just canceled that game. They had 77 inches of snow in Buffalo, which ironically is taller than most of the players on the field. <laughs> and they sold out, what, 55,000 seats for that uh, Ford Field game between Cleveland and Buffalo in a couple of hours? Incredible, isn't it? Well, the Bills travel well, don't they? Sure do. And some Browns fans. 
Wiley running wild to the opposite side of the field. He's got a first down, first and goal for the Zips. Cam Wiley, principal running back who had 144 yards, three scores against Eastern Michigan from Las Vegas, Nevada. Levin Little, look at the bounce. I love the inside influence handoff. So you hand it, he starts right, the defense reads their keys, they close in, and then Wiley bounces it to the outside. It takes advantage of all you. All they need to do is a little setup. Just influence in the middle, the defense will come, and then you spill. So now it's first and goal. Wiley inside the five. Clock under four minutes for the first half, and the zips with a four-point lead and driving. And this would be big for Akron if they can punch it in here. Hey, think about it, their only win came way back in September against the lower division team. Yep, Since St. then, Brent. nine straight losses. Well, and that's a little bit misleading. Oh, here we go. Yeah, good play by Undercuffler. Fake to Wiley, throw to the end zone. Adams, touchdown Akron. Alex Adams with a reception and off the Curtis Harper pick. The Zips have back-to-back -back scores. And watch, they're going to drag Adams across the formation in motion and then into the flat. And it's a very easy pitch and catch from under Cuffler to Alex Adams. Six more. A little dance routine, huh? Yeah, I was trying to see what they were getting down with there. Corey Spiegel with the extra point off the hold from Noah Getman and the snap of Kyle Bauman. Zips have their biggest lead of the game here. Late first half, 16-6, and back to the pick that set it all up by the big lineman, Curtis Harper. Beautiful job by the big fella. And, that you know, it's great to get turnovers, but you want to turn the uh, turnover into points. And that's exactly what they did, getting the ball to Alex Adams, second touchdown in as many weeks. And these receivers for Akron are coming on strong. And you're a far better judge of this than I am because you played. I did not. But Undercuffer looks as if he's been playing a long, long time. It's not his first game. But the fact is, he seems very polished with his receivers out there. Yeah, there looks like a, a good familiarity between them. Uh, and also, important to note, last week when he came in, when Irons went out injured, he kept getting better as the season went on, as the game went on. Yes. And we're seeing that here also. And what I really like is what we're seeing on the screen. And that is quarterbacks, receivers, having a good time and really enjoying themselves. Because at the end of the day, it is a game. And, you know, the best teams are, are those that truly enjoy each other's company, where the players really like their teammates and get along. And I'm seeing that right here from Undercuffler. That's a great point. How many times do we forget about the fact that it is just a game? And right now, Jeff's numbers for the first half are solid. 12 of 17, 129, and a couple of scores. And again, it's an improvement on last week. Last week completed 44% of his passes, 8 of 18. So he's already surpassed that um, of course that interception was really the first pass he threw downfield but since then he has continued to step up and step up and he, there he is with Ryan Jankowski who now is the backup quarterback yeah Husky's finding themselves in a two touchdown hole right now and you see the sideline from Akron now they have all the momentum they're playing fired up they know that this is a team their program and they're in the middle of a culture change. Uh, that's what everybody inside the program says. And as you mentioned earlier with Coach Moorhead, you know, he's, how do you win these, how do you win the close games? They wanted the Buffalo, even though, again, they're Buffalo, they might need the game this Friday, the makeup game, to become bowl eligible. Akron, it was important for them to make it up because they need the reps. They want this team to continue to get better. And there's no better time to get better than actually playing football games. You can yep. practice all you want. You can do seven on sevens. You can spend time in the weight room. But you've got to have a live opponent against them. And, and for Coach Moorhead in this program, getting another game is invaluable for the, their um, ascent up the MAC standings. When he was a coordinator back in 04, he said we had a 20-some day delay between games 
This time around, it was a couple of weeks. And so he said, we just prepared as if we had a game coming up that Saturday, which we didn't. Contact at the 35-yard line. No flag, though. Incomplete pass. And Northern Illinois is going to have to give up the football. This game has changed on a dime, has it not, here in the second quarter? It, absolutely. They just jumped out on them. Now this ball is going to be about five or seven yards past him. So it's a good no call, right? Absolutely. And, he, you know, he just touched him at the very end, but it certainly didn't have any impact on whether or not the receiver was going to be able to catch the football. That was Rashad Hentz in coverage for Akron. Early in the game, Tom Foley got off a 56-yard punt. This one a bit shorter. Takes a solid Husky bounce from the 32. How about this? <laughs> All the way down to the nine. I feel like we're playing Price is Right or something. Yeah. You're waiting for it to settle. 23-yard <laughs> bounce, and so number 98's got off a couple of dandies so far today, and he pins Akron deep. Huskies still have three timeouts to go. And two minutes remaining in the first half, if in fact they get the ball back. So following his 56-yard punt, Foley now has one of 60 with a bounce again of 23. Yeah, this wind is certainly helping Foley's stats for the season. Because that punt, the first one was a bomb. That one hung up in the air and then just, you know, the, the oblong football was rolling in the right direction for yes, it was. Northern Illinois. Zips inside their own 10, Cam Wiley. Straight ahead and a good start to this drive as they want to preserve the football, not have to give it up. The Huskies are going to use the first of three timeouts with 1.45 remaining. Timeout. Northern play Illinois. by Isaiah Green their May. First of the half. Playing yeah, down the line seconds, of scrimmage. Timeout. Please reset the game clock to 1 minute 45 seven, 47 seconds. 1.47, please. Thank you. Akron defeated St. Francis to start the season. Since then, it's been empty. Still looking for win number two. It's been close in a number of games. Now has its best chance to uh, nearly end the season the way it began. It's It'll turn around and fly to Buffalo, by the way, on Thursday, and then play on, or rather drive to Buffalo, excuse me, and then uh, play on Friday. Yeah, I was going to say, such an unpredictable league you know, Bowling Green last week played for a chance to play in the finals, and they only knocked off Akron by three. Um, you know, Kent State, that was a six-point loss. Central Michigan, a seven-point loss. So you start looking at how close these games are, and it's really the difference between being bowl eligible or not. Are you able to win and come away with victories in those close games? Zips will keep it on the ground. That means the Huskies will use another timeout, bringing up a third and four. If you're Akron, do you shoot for the first time down out. by Northern way of the air, or do you They're force the Huskies to call yet another timeout time play out. defense? Please reset the game clock to one minute, 43 seconds. One, four, three, please. Thank you. And this is always, to me, this is one of the more difficult decisions for an offensive coordinator and a head coach. Do you play to eliminate the final Husky timeout? Or because if you if you throw the football, which they're not expecting you to, and you pick up the first down, that effectively ends the, the quarter. Yes. And the and the half, which it appears based on the play calling uh, Akron has elected to use on this drive, that's what they're hoping for. They just want to take this lead, eleven point lead, go into the locker room. You don't want to give Northern Illinois the ball back. Also important to note, they're gonna be punting into a very strong wind. Let's see what they decide to do here on a third and four. Under Cuffler again for the gun. Empty. Yep. Five receivers. Two to the left, three to the right. Plenty of time on the play clock. Now Wiley back with his quarterback. Play clock at five. What is, you know, we got some movement. An illegal procedure coming up against the Zips. Well, there was confusion. Ball start. Number three. Offense. Five-yard penalty. 
Third down. It's against the wide receiver, Daniel George. So that makes that punt, if that is what's going to happen into a stiff wind, even more difficult. What they were trying to do is get a free, they were trying to get Northern Illinois to jump off sides. And there's George to the right, or the top of the screen rather, left of the quarterback who just moved. Now will they risk nine. a pass? Got to get it, Ryan, to the 19. Back to the ground, straight ahead into the secondary. Won't have to worry about a pass. Cam Wiley all the way up to the 38-yard line with a huge play on third down for the Zips, and now they're going to go quickly. Well, they have two timeouts, and they've almost flipped the field, and I think the strategy going into the locker room may have just changed. Sure, why not? Leonard Cuff went out to Daniel George near the sticks. The Zips have two timeouts remaining. Clock stops now with a pickup of the first down. What a dramatic turn of events off the carry by Cam Wiley, who had a huge hole. And he went right up the heart of the Northern Illinois defense, really stepped out of one tackle. The first down. Timeout, Akron. They're second of the half. This will be a 30 second timeout. Beautiful job by Cam Wiley. Takes a shot at the end, but that was a big time play. And then the completion following that, and now uh, to Daniel George. Akron has the ball at midfield. Well, oddly enough, the Huskies, who used their timeouts wisely there to try to get the ball back, have actually benefited Joe Moorhead's offense because those two stoppages of play have allowed the Zips a whole 85 seconds to work with. Corey Smeagle. The kicker for Akron has a long of 42 on the season. He hit that against Kent State. That would mean you'd have to get the ball to the 25. However, again, they're kicking into the wind. Sure. And this is a really strong wind. I don't know way they're playing in the second quarter, Ryan. They may be thinking six here. Hunter Cuffler's had a terrific second quarter. Three-step drop out to the boundary. And the freshman Nash with the catch inside the 45-yard line. Check that. That's Tristan Brink with the catch. Backup tight end. That's a long throw. Timeout. Under Cuffler just Akron. gets it there. Their third and final timeout of the half. This will be a 30 second timeout. The distance between hashes, they're different in college than they are in the pros, are they not? Yes, they are. Um, and it's the real impact of that. I mean, you see it here with the quarterback, but really it's for the kick, kickers. You know, it creates easier angles. Sure. End of three quarters in Columbus, Michigan 24, Ohio State 20, Wolverines at the Buckeye 13, first and 10. You want to change your pick? That means you must have picked Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> we will reveal this at halftime, not a second earlier. No, all, all I'm so going to say is. So I can make a change. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I'm not going to tell you who I have, but I don't need to change my pick. <laughs> wow. There's a look at the hashes we spoke of moments ago. Second and four. Well, why not? Cam Wiley picks up yet another first down, or he's very close to it. At the Northern Illinois 40 as the clock stops. It is a first down. And Akron is out of timeouts. They just used their third and final. Well, they're playing with house money right now, are they not? I think so. Yeah, and that's, you know... Keep doing what you're doing. They're going to go down. They'll probably take some shots here to the outside or in the middle. But drive the ball downfield. See what you can do. Looking for Adams. Instead, one hops it to George. Penalty flag on the play. Intended again for Daniel George. Ronan Chambers, number 74. His helmet is off. So Undercuff a little to shake it up on the play, too. Personal foul. Legal hands to the face. Number 95, defense, 15-yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic first down. Uh, Number Devontae 74 Mal for Akron does not have to leave the game for a play. That is huge. Yep, Chambers doesn't have to leave, so. Look, O'Malley's going to push in the left guard right there, number 74, and look at he just pushes him in the, in the uh, face mask and dislodges his helmet, and that is a big error for Northern Illinois' defense. So from a third and 11 after a penalty back deep in Akron's own territory, followed by the run by Cam Wiley. Now this, threatening to score 
with time running out in the first half and to add to the 17-6 advantage. Under Cuffler. Again out to the boundary. Again another nice safe pass. And he has found Daniel George open on a number of occasions out in the flat like that. They ran the outside receiver off, and, which was Brank, and uh, the inside receiver, George, under Cuffler, throws it right as he's getting out of his break. It's a beautiful pass, and now you're going to see George come over and collect the ball before running out of bounds. Beautiful play by under Cuffler. First and 10 from the 14 of the Huskies, under Cuffler. Little fade route, but that one's too far for the intended receiver. Adams, the intended receiver. Well, this receiving core with a backup quarterback, a healthy DJ Irons next year, on top of a freshman phenom coming in. Wow. That one could be pretty good in 2023. Yep. Well, you get better when you are pushed, when there's sure. competition. Raises all boats. Now 38 seconds to go, first half. Shotgun formation, under Cuffler again looking. And now throwing out a desperation look out. That nearly was picked. There were enough defenders back there for the Huskies. The backup tight end Tristan Brank was in the end zone. I don't know if that was the first option or not. And just look at, um, can't tell who that is from Northern Illinois jumping up and knocking the ball down. A dangerous pass in the double coverage. Well, he took a shot as he released the football, so I don't know, you know, either way, if that's who he was throwing to, it's sure. a dangerous pass. I don't want to, I don't think getting hit helped it, but he threw into triple coverage virtually. Under Cuffler to the end zone. It's got a man wide open. And a nice breakup in the end zone. Was that routine with the hit, 38? Yeah, Routine. And Routine, who just knocked the ball away on the previous down, jars the ball loose. Huge play. Yeah, is it Daniel George he's trying to get it to? Daniel George yep. and Routine with a big shot in the back. So that prevents six. We'll give Akron a chance at three. Corey Spiegel, a 31-yard attempt to add to the Akron lead of 11. Akron 20, Northern Illinois 6. What a second quarter this has been for the Zips. So they don't get the touchdown they wanted. Off the fine defensive play by Nick Routine, but they march all the way down the field after being deep in their own territory and at least get points. And that's significant. I think that's a great point you bring up, Jim. It was, again, after the offsides, third and nine. Yes. From inside the 10-yard line, and about a minute of clock time later, a minute and a half, you're kicking a field goal, and you're going up 14 points. And that is, um, for, for that man, Joe Moorhead, those are the, it's, it might not seem like a big deal, but those are the sorts of improvements you want to see when you're building a program, building a team, and building that culture. Well, Moorhead's done it before. He revamped things at Fordham. As he said, he held serve at Mississippi State, where they still able to make a couple of bowl games and won the egg bowl twice so uh, I know Joe still continues to hang his head on that because that's a big game for <laughs> Mississippi State and for Mississippi of course absolutely Huskies have the wind and one timeout remaining and a long way to go penalty flag on the play Clyde Price the third on special teams making a play for Akron. During the return, holding number 48, return team, 10 yard penalty, first down, Northern Illinois. I'd like to have somebody run some analytics on over the course of the college football season, how many kick returns have holding penalties that bring it back. It's gotta be somebody's doing that. Somebody should be. I just don't know who it is. Maybe it could be you. It could. <laughs> Tom McHamm oh, Hammock, no. the uh, Northern Illinois coach, year four for him. Frustrating quarter. The 
and that is the end of it. Coming up at halftime, scores, halftime highlight stats, and a look at the college That's football the the playoff. Half. As Ryan and I fiercely debate who belongs in and who fails to get in. I know that the college football playoff board will definitely be looking at us, will they not? <laughs> at Honda, we know you have to drive through the mud. If you want to reach the rainbow, brave the desert before you find the oasis. Conquer the mountain to see how far your dreams can take you. The all-new CRV and CRV Hybrid, part of the Honda line of rugged vehicles. Man, I make this cheesiest chain look good. I'm still feeling the cheesiest. You are a wheel of cheese. Cheese it, official sponsor of the college football playoff. Welcome back to Husky Stadium where the Huskies trail the Zips at the break, 20 to six. Akron trying for its second win of the year. Northern Illinois shooting for victory four and it's been a big second quarter for the Zips. Well, when we come back, we'll be researching the college football playoff and Ryan and I will have some significant picks as to how we think it will all come out. So stay with us here on ESPN3. To build the all-new Honda CRV Hybrid, we took everything you love about the CRV and kicked it up a notch with excellent fuel efficiency and greater power for a CRV unlike any before. Adventure confidently with the most fuel efficient full line automaker in America, the all new CRV and CRV Hype, part of the Honda line of rugged vehicles. Cheese. I was feeling cute. I might delete these later. Don't delete them. I look good. Crop yourself out. But my hair does look amazing. Cheese It, official sponsor of the college football playoff. 20 straight points by the Zips. They have the lead at the break, trying to get their second win of the season as they're on top of Northern Illinois, 20 to six. Welcome back to our broadcast position. I'm Jim Barber, this is Ryan Cavanaugh. Earlier in the week, we had a chance to slot our four for the college football playoff. By the way, Michigan leading Ohio State 31-20 early fourth quarter and three touchdown throws from J.J. McCarthy. So these picks were done prior to the game today. But if the uh, game holds up, I want to change mine. <laughs> we'll start with yours, though. Go ahead. And I know you like Michigan. Yeah, so. I picked Michigan to win today, and they're making me look good. So my my top four, top six is predicated on Georgia running the table, Michigan knocking off Ohio State. I think TCU, if they get Kansas State, they're going to lose uh, in the championship game. And then Ohio State's going to creep their way back in because they would have the best loss of all the one loss teams wow very impressive by the way nice mug shot too i don't know if that was uh, mug shot yeah, over there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah looks good thank uh, you let's go to my top six and of course i didn't take a lot of favor with uh with michigan i picked ohio state to win the game and i also threw michigan out and my dark horse is usc if southern california defeats notre dame tonight and is a slight favorite at the coliseum and then wins the pac-12 championship I think Lincoln Riley's resume, particularly his first year with the Trojans, is good enough. Yeah, so, you know, we've talked about this off air, and the biggest thing for me is who decided that an early season loss means less than a late season loss? I think the committee did. did is that? Yeah, <laughs> those guys. Yeah. Because, look, if you're, if you're even here in, in your scenario, number five, Michigan, their only loss is to the number two team in, in the country in Ohio State. Unless it was to Georgia and that was one loss, you don't have a more impressive one-loss team. Both of us feel that Alabama is, is lurking right now at the sixth spot. Do you think when this all plays out, the Tide find a way to get in? I don't think so. I think two losses is, is too much, especially, you know, they're not going to get in over Michigan or, or Ohio State, whoever loses that game. So I, I just think it's too much. 
it's interesting too that the college football playoff system is uh, actually undergoing some um, well not scrutiny it's always been scrutinized but uh, some consideration for uh, expanding the playoffs and when and if we get around to that and if we get the 12 teams or whatever who knows but uh, this has created a lot of excitement even with four oh i think so and look there's a lot of people out there four is, is good eight is better and nobody's ever going to say hey we figured out the system let's just leave it alone that's not how our society works they're constantly going to be looking at it tweaking it changing it and you know look we're looking at the top six teams alabama they could win it all if they got in so there is a good reason uh to, for me to expand it to eight because you know the last thing you want to do is add four more teams who don't really have a chance to be competitive i don't think that's the case by the way quickly you think michigan wins today i do I think they hang on. Back with more and the suspense of that in a moment. When you're ready to go, but static says, whoa. Try bounce lasting fresh dryer sheets. More freshness, more softness, less static, less wrinkles. Yeah, it's the sheet. New Bounce Lasting Fresh Dryer Sheets. It's the sheet. Cheese. I was feeling cute. I might delete these later. Don't delete them. I look good. Prop yourself out. But my hair does look amazing. Cheese it. Official sponsor of the college football playoff. Huskies had a couple of field goals in the first half in a 6-0 lead. That's been the scoring for Tom Hammock's team. Right now trailing Akron by a score of 20-6. And the understudy, under Cuffler, in place of the injured DJ Irons, is working himself into a starting spot maybe for the start of next year perhaps, Ryan. Well, he is, he's putting his hat in the ring, and he's doing it with an impref impressive performance here. He's 15-23, 159, and two touchdowns in the first half. Let's take a look at the first half numbers, first half highlights, and under Cuffler went to work with a score six nothing, and his work after practice with Jacques Louis and George and Adams has been huge. And he's found a way to get the wide receivers have gotten behind Northern Illinois and under Cuffler, as you see here, can throw. Really, everything's been on display. He throws a nice deep ball, intermediate, and. Uh, He's been helped out by Cam Wiley and some of his running out of the backfield. Yeah, that run by Wiley, by the way, he's had a couple of big runs, and one of them came by way of a third and long in their own territory. And then it's the big guy, the big, the big lineman with the interception, Curtis Harper, and the reaction from his uh, teammates was, was priceless. And that set up this touchdown pass to Alex Adams. Turnovers into points, and that's a recipe for success, and it's one that Akron has been able to use in this first half to push to a 14-point lead. Zips will play Friday against Buffalo. Here are the first half numbers. Total yards almost all in the second quarter, Ryan, for Akron. Remember, they had rushed for just a minus one in the first period. Now in the second quarter, they pick up 95 rush yards, 253 total for the first half. And by way of turnovers and first downs, have a 20-6 to lead at the break. Huskies are back on the... At Honda, we know you have to drive through the mud. But if you want to reach the rainbow, brave the desert before you find the oasis. Conquer the mountain to see how far your dreams can take you. The all-new CRV and CRV Hybrid, part of the Honda line of rugged vehicles. I was feeling cute. I might delete these later. Don't delete them. I look good. Prop yourself out. But my hair does look amazing. Cheese it. Official sponsor of the college football playoff. Ryan Kavanaugh, Jim Barber, back for the second half. And the Zips, who won the toss, deferred to start the game, get the advantage not only getting the last score of the first half, but get the ball to start the second half. 
And this will start from the Akron 25. And right now they are very much in control of this football game. You know, Jim, we just looked at the first half stats and what they don't have on there is the defensive impact. And, you know, I can only speak for myself, but, you know, I didn't realize how well this Akron Zip defense is playing in the second quarter. Northern Illinois only had seven yards of offense. Mm. And has limited Thomas Hammock's team to just two field goals. Both of those coming in the first quarter. Injured DJ Irons with the team not playing. Jeff Undercuffler, the backup quarterback at the helm for the Zips. And Wiley to start the second half with another solid run. Cam Wiley carrying from the 25 up to the 31. He has had an impressive game here in Northern Illinois. And that's the same play they ran earlier. Will they give him the football from the left going right? when he knows he's, it's a design bounce back out to the left, but you're just drawing the defenders in. He has a 55-yarder to his credit earlier this season. And again, a huge game against Eastern Michigan just a few weeks back. Going to get a heavy dose here in the second half. And at the zips, and hardly any surprise with Billy Fessler calling the plays from the booth, can gain some valuable yards on the ground. That will continue to move chains and continue to move clock. Let's see if the Huskies stack the box here. Force Undercuffler to try to get rid of it. Need to pick up two. Adams in motion. And Wiley didn't make it. In fact, Wiley stopped for a loss of one. So the Huskies make an important defensive stand here to start the third quarter. Routine, who had a huge breakup of a George catch in the end zone toward the end of the first half, part of the defense there to make the stop on fourth down. And O'Malley's also been quite active today as well. Look at the job of... So you see C.J. Brown coming up along with Routine, as you mentioned, Ray Thomas from the defensive end position. Big stop for Northern Illinois. Fair catch called for inside the 35. Two minutes into the second half. To build the all new Honda CRV hybrid, you took everything you love about the CRV and kicked it up a notch with excellent fuel efficiency and greater power. For a CRV unlike any before, adventure confidently with the most fuel efficient full line automaker in America. The all new CRV and CRV Hype, part of the Honda line of rugged vehicles. When you're ready to go, but static says, whoa. Try bounce lasting fresh dryer sheets. More freshness, more softness, less static, less wrinkles. Yeah, it's the sheet. New bounce lasting fresh dryer sheets. It's the sheet. That's Cam Wiley, then the principal running back for the Zips today. Again, without DJ Irons, who does a lot of running for their run packages. Injured quarterback. Wiley's averaging over five yards of carry, and his runs have been quite nifty so far today. Yeah, he's shown a little bit of everything. Look at the, the not only the speed of the outside, but then the power to finish the run and some fancy footwork through the holes as well. Just a tough running back to bring down. Wiley goes 200 pounds, six foot two, and he's a long strider. And he's had some real big ones that, uh, as you mentioned earlier, third and nine before the half was a, a huge run to get the first down, which ultimately led to a field goal. And there's Bubba Arslanian, number 27, on uh, the design run by Justin Lynch. And Bubba was all over it. Bubba's got a pretty good family heritage going, too, with business and everything. He's got a quite, quite a future headed for him, doesn't he, know? Yeah, yeah, his family owns it pretty large uh, carpet type business in the 
Akron, Cleveland area. Bubba, of course, went to Aurora High School. Standout wrestler and there's a flag. I, I mentioned this week to you that I had the pleasure of calling Bubba Arslanian's final high school. So you want to be around to call his final final college game, game right? Receiver down yeah, field. right. Number zero, offense. The pass to Fabian McCray is negated because McCray and his teammates pick up an ineligible receiver penalty. And so after a first down throw from Nevin Kremaskoli, that's coming back. Yeah, and going to finishing that conversation, you know, there's a lot of moving pieces with when is Bubba's last high school or college football game. Sure. It was going to be now. Uh, at least for this year, and then they have Buffalo next week. Bubba has one more year of, of uh, eligibility, and we know everybody in the Akron program would love to get him back in the Zips uniform, which, which is probably a Hall of Fame career um, for Akron, what Bubba Arslanian's been able to do. So you think the dead giveaway is the fact he wasn't there for senior night, right? Or at least for yeah, the he didn't walk. senior celebration. Yeah, he didn't walk with the other seniors. Uh, and this Bubba, this, he was very under-recruited coming out of high school. He's only 5'10", he's 220, but you turn the tape on and it doesn't lie. Bubba Arslanian is in on, if he's not in on the tackle, he's in the, he's in the picture. Romascoli needs 14 yards and he almost got it. That was a little bit rushed, and one of the reasons is Bubba Arslanian. Here they do a cross blitz with the linebackers and C27 to the right of Nemescoli, or Kremascoli rather, Nevin Kremascoli, almost gets home, and he had to rush the pass, and it was just a little bit outside of Cole Tucker. Yeah, Tucker's been battling through some injuries, too. Speaking of people that have been hurt, we talk mostly quarterbacks, but running backs, but uh, also Tucker, too, is a big part of that offense. Yeah, Coach Hammock. It's good to see him out there. Coach Hammock said he was going to try and give it a go. He's a fifth-year senior. He's had a really nice career here uh, for the Huskies. By the way, do you know what uh, Bubba Arzelanian's real name is, first name? Alan. Very good. Thought I'd stump you there, but uh, you're right on top of the things. I should know better. <laughs> <laughs> yep. No, he's... Uh, well, your Michigan pick, by the way, is looking solid now. Donovan Edwards just ran 75 yards for a touchdown with Ohio State closing in. It is 38-23 Wolverines, seven minutes and change left to play. Well, the tide is turning in that uh, rivalry. Yes. So what? if that holds up, you think Ohio State is still in the picture for the college football playoff? I, I do, but I think you, they're going to need help from TCU or USC, one of those two teams getting a loss. For me, you know, as we, I, I think the loss is going to be TCU. I think they've had a lot of really close calls. Of course, last week against Baylor, they barely escaped. Um, and that's just the gut feeling I have that they're, they're not putting teams away like you would expect a, a top four team to do. Sure. Rank the tight end. Go heavy on one side. Wiley carries the football. The Zips, who gave up six first quarter points, have scored 20 straight. And after a fresh set of downs, have the football around their own 40 yard line. They have a long bus ride back after this game to take a look at Bubba Arcelanian of seven hours to the Akron campus. And how pleasant would that be if this lead they're able to hold up? Well, I've been on some long bus trips before, and they it always seems like a it's more enjoyable after a win. Yes. Oh, he's wide open down the middle. Got him, too. And caught! That's Alex Adams. That's a touchdown. I'm not even sure it was intended for him. I do not think it was. It was headed for Daniel George. And, and Adams intercepted his own quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> Take a look at Alex Adams. He's going to come from the left of your screen. Here's down the seam. Number three is George. And then Alex Adams intercepts <laughs> the <great>. pass. <laughs> Takes it into the end zone. Oh, man. But it's going right. And it's going well for the Zips. It's been quite a day. Now a three-score lead. Corey Spiegel off the snap of Kyle Bauman for the 27th Acro point. 
That was good for 61 yards. So you got a pick from a defensive lineman, and now you've got a pick, so to speak, from a wide receiver. Yeah. <laughs> well, I saw this from the beginning. Daniel George down the seam. You can see him right there. He's wide open. And Alexander, <laughs> Alex oh, Adams. Catch, but it's a catch for six. Yeah, in oh, stride. Man. And I'm pretty sure somebody ran the wrong route because it's not ideal to have two receivers in the same area. But if he didn't, if Alex Adams didn't come and catch that pass, Javon Bird, number two from Northern Illinois, probably would have had an interception. Well, you consider all the bad luck and the difficulties the Zips have had this year and to have all this working in their direction since the second quarter has begun is... It's almost kind of heartfelt for them because there haven't been a lot of smiles on the sidelines this year. 27 straight points. And look at Adams goes over 100 yards again. Last week, 102. Two touchdowns. That gives him eight on the season. Adams has been a monster late in the year. Akron's coordinator on offense, Billy Fessler, was telling us they just had to junk the run game, the run package for D.J. Irons because he's out, and under Cuffler is not a runner by design at the backup quarterback spot. But he's a passer. He's a thrower. Man, has he been to those guys right now in the middle of your picture since the second quarter has begun. Still time remaining and a lot of it for the Huskies, but now they're down 21 and really haven't shown much signs on offense of moving the football. They need, a, they need a spark offensively, that's for sure, Jim. And I'm not sure where they're going to get it from. Nemascoli able to throw that one at the last second, complete. It's Shamar Mark Thornton. Thornton might be his first catch of the day. I think so. And it's good for nine, second and one, and... Northern Illinois will go fast. The tackle solo for Bubba Arslanian. Jaden Cradle's been the man today. He's had to be. Along with Billy Dozier. And in this case, Whaley is back in. Well, we didn't expect him to go today, but Harrison Whaley is back. Well, how about this, huh? Yeah. Harrison yeah. Whaley, who had uh, the game against Ball State for the ages of 230 yards, was, well, we thought he was ruled out. Yeah, Ontario, Ontario Brown and Harrison Whaley, we, we were not expecting to see them. So it is a good sign for Northern Illinois and for Whaley that he's out there. Yes, we've got an injured zip of the 40, by the way, with time being called. We'll try to identify the player when we come Four back. Five minutes gone in the third quarter. Welcome back, number 30, Harrison Whaley. Honda, we know you have to drive through the mud. If you want to reach the rainbow, brave the desert before you find the oasis. Conquer the mountain to see how far your dreams can take you. The all-new CRV and CRV Hybrid, part of the Honda line of rugged vehicles. Jane for the cheesiest cheese. Give me that. You don't need it. To be the cheesiest, gotta snatch that chain. Wait, well, how'd you? We need another chain. Cheese it, official sponsor of the college football playoff. Well, perhaps Northern Illinois running back Harrison Whaley was watching this and watching his team fall behind by three scores and said, Coach, put me in because he wasn't expected to play today. And averaging almost five and a half, in fact, better than five and a half yards a carry. His um, success in the past badly needed, and he is back in the game. Well, it's coming at, at the right time. Let's go, let's go back to the key to this game, and it's been the wideouts that have made such a big difference for the backup quarterback, Jeff Undercuffler. Yeah, they've been dynamic, and they've come from a lot of different players as well. George. Back to live action. Nevin Krimiskoli with the incompleted pass. Brings up a third and five. 
And that looked like it went right through the hands of Cole Tucker. Cole Tucker has had an excellent career here. And this is a rarity. Coming into this game, Cole Tucker only needs three receiving yards to hit 2,000 yards. And he'd be the eighth in school history to do so. And it looks like they're trying to get him those yards. Sure. Under 10 minutes for the third quarter. Zip showing blitz. Let's see if they spend the house or back some people up. They will send four and still force some pressure. Kremaskoli's got a run for the first downs. Got it. Nevin Kremaskoli forced out of the pocket, running to the Akron sidelines, picks up the first down at midfield. It's a nice play. Kremaskoli. Similar to Undercuffler, known more as the drop back traditional passer. Justin Lynch handles the running duties typically when he's in the game, and Kremaskoli showing a little the athleticism here, picking up the first down. Everybody's got their back turned. Kremaskoli gets to the sticks. Well, the coordinator, Eric Eidsness, got to be happy about that. And another first down, throwing to the opposite side of the field. Jamar Thornton on the catch, number 19. Starting wide receiver. Northern Illinois is showing an offensive spark for the first time since the first quarter, frankly. And a much needed one at that. Football at the 37. Still a lot of clock left in the third quarter and all the fourth. Back to the other side. And not much available there. Pickup of about a yard. McCray with a catch. Sticking with this uh, fast tempo are the Huskies. Four different quarterbacks this year for Northern Illinois. Kremis Coley is now starting to get into some rhythm. Going to be a first down for the Huskies to the 13. And Cole Tucker with a catch at 25, and he is well over that 2,000 mark convention, Ryan. Absolutely, and you can see the reaction. It's as if everybody knew what they were trying to get to. By the way, I want to change my pick on Ohio State and Michigan here in a minute, and I'll tell you why after this snap. First to 10, Northern Illinois inside the 15, and trying to get their first touchdown of the game. Michigan's Donovan Edwards just ran for 65 yards and a touchdown. He's got two long runs. Game set and match Michigan, 45-23 with... Three minutes and change left. How about that? At the shoe. Yeah. They haven't won there in nine, the past nine games at the shoe have been won by Ohio State. And it'll be interesting to see if Ohio State finds a way into those top four. You know, I don't think losing by 22 points is going to help them, though. No. Unless they get help from some of the contending teams all getting beat, which can happen as we get down to the last part of the season. Good defense up front. I really have to like, be thinking six here because field goals do you no good in a game where the opposite quarterback is dialing things up nicely. Harrison Whaley, number 30, has become active in this game. That's important. And getting touchdowns, you would think of this as four-down territory, I believe. Yeah, and they're bringing in a heavier package. The Brock Lampy, the um, fullback just came into the game. I think they're going to uh, roll out three tight ends. Looks like three tight ends. A fullback and a running back. Fake by Kremis Cole. He's oh. in trouble and he's sacked. First sack of the game and he got clobbered back at the 18-yard line. Wow. Victor Jones comes from the backside. Kremis Cole, he never sees him. And as he turns around, boom. And what, what really hurt the most is as he turned around, he started moving that way right into Victor Jones. And well, just like that, they are going to bring the field goal unit. They out. are. Fourth and 12. It's going to be a 34-yard attempt by John Richardson, who has two field goals today. He is accounted for all the offense. Six minutes to go, third quarter. So some points out of the drive, but not what they had hoped for. 
6.05 remain. Akron still in command, up by 18. At Honda, we know you have to drive through the mud. But if you want to reach the rainbow, brave the desert before you find the oasis. Conquer the mountain to see how far your dreams can take you. The all-new CRV and CRV Hybrid, part of the Honda line of rugged vehicles. You feel the cheesiest, but the chain puts the extra cheese on the cracker. It's here. Look at this. It's the cheesiest chain. This is the cheesiest day of my life. This takes spinning cheese to a whole new level. Cheese it official sponsor of the college football playoff. Been quite a career for the hometown kid, number 15, Cole Tucker. Now we're over 2,000 yards receiving, and that was accomplished moments ago. 154 catches, 10 scores, the eighth 200 yard, 2,000 yard receiver in Northern Illinois history. Currently ranks eighth in Northern Illinois all time for catches and receiving yards. You mentioned he's a DeKalb, DeKalb native. He's also a double Husky legacy as his father Brett played football here and his mother Cindy was a gymnast at Northern Illinois. It's amazing uh, how many professional or rather collegiate athletes come from families as the flag's been thrown on the return. Uh, come from families that have played college sports somewhere. And it doesn't necessarily for the dad have to be in football, but more often than not it is. Rod Hudson's our referee. Today he's been busy. During the return, holding, number five, return team, 10-yard penalty, first down. I'm going to have to update my analytics. There's another hold on a kick return. <laughs> I think you may have found a cottage industry here, you know, for <laughs> that next only year. I am interested in. <laughs> <laughs> well, it really is. I mean, I, I, I don't know. What percent do you think, Jim? Fifty? That's not a bad number, actually. And right there, uh, thirty-seven from Northern Illinois is getting tackled. <laughs> the only problem is he doesn't have the football. No. This will start this uh, series deep in their own territory. Didn't bother them the first half when they marched for a touchdown. Now they'll operate from the 12 yard line. Still with an 18 point lead and six minutes to go in the third quarter. Tight end Brank winds up to the left side of the screen. Two receivers, two undercufflers left. In place of injured DJ Irons. Ooh, dangerous pass there. For a first down, he got bailed out by his receiver because Daniel George had to go up and get that. Get that. That could have been picked. The last place you want to throw an outbreaking route is to the inside. That's the last place you want to put the football because that's where the defense is, and your receiver is going in the opposite direction. But if you got a guy like this on your team, he can make bad passes and look good. Yeah, that was a terrific play by Daniel George. Bails out. Jeff Undercuffler gets him a first down to the 26. Zips have a busy next six days. The game here. And a first down run by Cam Wiley. Another one to the 37-yard line. They have a game here today. And then after going back seven yards on the seven uh, hours on the bus to Akron, we'll turn around and get to Buffalo on Thursday for a game on Friday. Yeah, the Zips came in last night. Stayed here in DeKalb, and they'll head back afterwards. The mood should be good if they can continue to sustain this lead. Good play defensively coming off the edge for Northern Illinois. Ray Thomas, the defensive end, crashing down. Well, Ray's the run stopper on this team. His length has a lot to do with that. Solid at tackles for losses. Just a pickup of two there, but it continues to move clock in favor of Akron. And every first down kills about two minutes off the clock or better. 
And the Zips wisely are working that down in the play clock to just a few seconds. And in this instance, it leads to illegal procedure. False start, number 55, offense, five yard penalty, remains first down. It's on the right guard, Anthony Wynn, one of the seniors of the Zips, will be playing this final game next Friday. Landers, Robard, Georges, Wigan, Williams up front. Some help from the tight end. Banks. They've been good today. Yeah, they've been rotating guys in too. Brian Kilbane and Ronan Chambers have both seen time up, up in that offensive line today. And with a second remaining, they launch the football here under Cuffler. One hops it. Northern Illinois brought pressure that time, and, and the offensive line and the running back came up and picked it up, and undercover looked a little bit rushed. And, you know, that is a facet of you just you want to put your trust in your offensive line and trust that the running back and the protection is going to hold up. But sometimes as a quarterback, when you see that blitz, your heart rate starts to increase, and you yes. want to get rid of that football. <laughs> it just, again, I, I don't. It might just be reps at this level and the speed and just trusting the process and that it's going to get picked up and taking another half second before delivering the football. Delivers to Alex Adams for a first down. He needed 13 and they got more than 20. What a big play by Undercuffler to Alex Adams. Move the chains into Northern Illinois territory and the drive moves on. And look at the block there. And a little help from some friends, T.J. Banks, number five. And the most impressive part is that pass was actually intended for Alex Adams this time. <laughs> By the way, if you're just joining us, um, you, you missed what, what Ryan referred to as a wide receiver pick. <laughs> in which a pass intended for Daniel George was actually picked off by his teammate Alex Adams that went for a touchdown. Here's Cam Wiley. Wiley bounces off one man, and look at him go, Cam Wiley. So many reasons that the Akrons have been comfortably ahead in this game. We talk about the three-headed monster of wide receivers, but can't say enough about Cam Wiley in his play this afternoon. He's been very good. Um, I really like his running style, his patience, and his ability to turn it up when you turn the burners on when he wants to. He's been impressive. Press set it down, it's down to the 33. By the way, Buffalo leading Kent State in its game today, 24-10. Zips and the Bulls to finish the regular season of the MAC on Friday in Buffalo. MAC championship, the pairings have already been set. Here's Wiley. Every time he gets the ball, at least from my perception, it almost looks like he's ready to get in that second line of defense and go to the house. Yeah, he's a one-cut kind of back, and he's going to take a break now. Clyde Price will relieve him. But he does have a little bit of that hold your breath every time he gets it. Sure. Because he's a game-breaker. You, you feel like at any time he can break a long run. Once again, Akron's style on offense, use as much of the play clock as possible, as this will dip well under 10. Bet they haven't had that happen very often this year, have they? No. Nice run there for yeah, Price. Price. He picks up a first down. So Wiley goes out. Price comes in. No difference, at least for one carry. Akron has a large number of transfers as well. When you start looking through the roster, T.J. Banks from West Virginia. Well, the portal is, what, 26 in total? Something like that? Yep. Cam Wiley started at uh, Minnesota. Clyde Price, Kansas State. Wide receivers George and Jacques Louis, both transfers. Penn State, Pitt. Alex Adams from LSU. Yep. Pretty good core. Another nice run by Price. Carries inside the five, make that inside the 10 yard line to the nine. So Price the third has made a big difference just in a couple of carries here replacing Wiley. 6'1", 220. Look at him carry defenders. That's it. 
All expense paid trip inside the 10 yard line. Yeah. Jump on the back of Clyde Price. Not a bad block from Jacques Louis out there on the uh, on the boundary too. First and goal. Zip looking for their largest lead. They'll go end around Adams. And that play is spread out nicely defensively for Northern Illinois as Alex is able to pick up maybe a yard. Javon Bird, he's been pretty active in that secondary, one of the corners, trying to track him down and force him out of bounds. That's going to end the third quarter, by the way. I was going to say, these are important reps here. You know, look, they're down by 18 points or being threatened, but you got to find out and ask who wants to play, who wants to make plays, and Bird is stepping up. Yeah, this is the Huskies' final game of the season. 27-9 after three. It is all Akron, and Akron threatening to add to it when we start the fourth quarter. At Honda, we know you have to drive through the mud. If you want to reach the rainbow, Brave the desert before you find the oasis. Conquer the mountain to see how far your dreams can take you. The all-new CRV and CRV Hybrid, part of the Honda line of rugged vehicles. When you're ready to go, but static says, whoa. Try bounce lasting fresh dryer sheets. More freshness, more softness, less static, less wrinkles. Yeah, it's the sheet. New bounce lasting fresh dryer sheets. It's the sheet. Alex Adams, wide receiver for Aquin, is the game's top receiver so far in catches and yards. He's got a couple of touchdown receptions. He's been targeted. Off those catches every time but two. And I wonder how they recorded the targeting when uh, <laughs> when Adams intercepted a pass intended for Daniel George uh, yeah. earlier uh, in this game. This is it. Yeah. So is that was that a, is that a target for George then? I think. It, I mean, honestly, it should be. And there's Clyde Price for a touchdown. His first of the game. As the Zips are starting to put this one away. 33 to 9 and Clyde Price the third off the bench for Cam Wiley getting some valuable time and making the most of it. Second touchdown, uh, I'm sorry, sixth touchdown on the season through the ground. And that is just too easy. Running right over the left side. You know, when you talk about defense, it's always how many helmets, how many jerseys from the other team are in the camera shot, or how many are around the football. And right there, there were not many. Uh, Northern Illinois Huskies trying to get after Clyde Price and prevent him from getting into the end zone. He gallops in. Thomas Hammock, the coach of Northern Illinois, said he was going to sit down with each and every player when this season is over, immediately after the season to find out what their intentions and their plans are. You think Northern Illinois is playing hard at the end of this game, in your opinion? Do I? Yeah. Uh, I, I don't think that was the greatest defensive effort right there. Okay. The, and, and you see who hit him is Nick Rateen. He is for sure playing to the end of the game here. But, you know, to my point, when you look at that, that replay, you don't see, you only saw Routine come and trying to, to prevent him from getting in, Price from getting into the end zone. So, yes, I... Well, that'll be a factor in some of those sit-downs, will it not? <laughs> I mean, the players get to talk about where they want, where their intentions are for the next season and their plans, but the head coach will have a lot to do with where they're going to be for the start of next season. You know, Coach Hammock has certain expectations for his program, and he established those with the expectations of himself when he played here. This year, inducted into the Northern Illinois Hall of Fame, so he knows what it's like to be a player. He's got instant street cred for all the guys in the locker room because he was in their spot before. And, you know, with those expectations, with winning the MAC last year, and that being the standard, not an outlier, 
you need full buy-in from your players and, and the team. I'm not suggesting he doesn't have it, but you know when you talk about that, I you know I, it's not necessarily an exit interview, but a season recap, an end of the year type meeting and a discussion. It, it doesn't include all the games up to this one. It includes the whole season. Sure. So he's going to look at that body work and say, where are where where's my defense? Why aren't they sprinting to the football? when they're you know running in untouched from eight yards out well without question he won't be thrilled with what he's seen today this being a senior day this being a day we say goodbye to 12 guys who've been with the program for a while and to lay an egg is pretty rough yeah it's been a tough year though for coach hammond and you know he made and his team frankly due to the injuries and we saw more of that today with cradle getting injured you're on the fourth quarterback. It's been well documented throughout this broadcast, the number of injuries and the moving pieces you have, and that makes it difficult to win. Earlier this year, we had a, a game with Northern Illinois, and he made a, Coach Hammock said, well, last year we won all the close games. Sure. This year we're losing the close games. And the margin for error in a um, such an even conference like the MAC. And I would almost dare I say unpredictable conference like the MAC. The margin for error is slight. So the difference between seven wins and four wins is are you winning those close games? Two thirds of the games, at least the league games this year, have been decided by a score or less. Ramascoli over the middle. Thorne with a catch, and he is shaken up. Over the middle, tough catch, and he got popped. Time out on the field for an injury to the I offense. Hope he's okay at midfield. He's still rolling around a bit. Shamar Thornton with a catch. We'll check on his health when we come back with a lot of clock left in the fourth quarter. This will be a quarter. Full media timeout. At Honda, we know you have to drive through the mud. If you want to reach the rainbow. Brave the desert before you find the oasis. Conquer the mountain to see how far your dreams can take you. The all-new CRV and CRV Hybrid, part of the Honda line of rugged vehicles. When you're ready to go, but static says, whoa. Try bounce lasting fresh dryer sheets. More freshness, more softness, less static, less wrinkles. Yeah, it's the sheet. New bounce lasting fresh dryer sheets. It's the sheet. Well, we talked about close games in league competition coming in 27 of the 45. Have been uh, nail biter 60% or better. And how about Buffalo playing up to speed and up to the graphic today, involved in a now tied game with Kent State at 24. The Bulls need this one or the one on Friday to become bowl eligible and led Kent State at one point 24 to 10, Ryan. Kent State just tied it up by going for two on cue with the graphic and yeah. the unpredictability of the Mac. Call it Maction, and Maction's been a lot of fun this year. Principally midweek games in November and a few on Saturday. And the season will actually end a little later than usual with that makeup between Buffalo and Akron on Friday coming up. And then, of course, the month the, of December. And then the MAC Championship, of course, on Saturday. Toledo, who a lot of people expected to be there, playing o Ohio, who a lot of people did not expect no. to be there. Ohio with three wins in the league last year. Toledo, by the way, actually co-champs with Eastern Michigan. Congratulations to Chris Creighton's team. Lose the tiebreaker, but uh, still finish as co-champs. Uh, the Mac West. They had an impressive performance against Central uh, the other day. Yes. Coach Third Creighton's and nine. Got it going. Kramaskoli with time off a four-man rush. And then at the very last second, is pressured. Akron says it has a pick. 
And we'll wait and see. No. The ruling on the field is an incomplete pass. Brings up fourth down. I think it was Jalen Durant, number 28. I'm sorry, Tyson Durant. Well, this sideline's not going to be partial, by the way, or impartial. No, strike call. Nice effort by Tyson Durant. He hung on to the football as well, just didn't get the feet in bounds. It's fourth and nine, and the Huskies are staying on the field. Yep, down by a bunch. Pressure on Kremiscoli, man coverage, caught! At the 23-yard line, McCray with a terrific catch. Well, he hasn't quit out there, has he? McCray is going after it. Kremiscoli gives his receiver a chance to make a play, and Fabian McCray does just that. We're going to send this one right into your living room. Look at this pass by Kremiscoli. Good adjustment by Fabian McCray. Brings it in, and on the... It's going to be a pick six the other way. Oh, my gosh. Rashad Hance all the way back. Check that. Tyson Durant. Touchdown, Akron. This one, Tyson Durant clearly keeps his feet in bounds. He jumps it. There's miscommunication between Kremiscoli and his receiver. And Tyson Durant unabated into the end zone for the pick six. Wow. 76-yard interception for touchdown. Kremiscoli's throwing the hitch. The wide receiver, Fabian McCray, I believe, was going deep. And the Huskies and the faithful here in DeKalb are shocked. That is the third turnover that Akron has picked up. One led to seven points in the first half. This was a pick six. What likely could be seven points. Extra point good by Spiegel, and it is now 41 to nine as the wheels have come off for the Huskies on senior day. Wow. We know you have to drive through the mud. If you want to reach the rainbow, brave the desert before you find the oasis. Conquer the mountain to see how far your dreams can take you. The all new CRV and CRV Hybrid, part of the Honda line of rugged vehicles. When you're ready to go, but Static says, whoa. Try Bounce Lasting Fresh Dryer Sheets. More freshness, more softness, less static, less wrinkles. Yeah, it's the sheet. New Bounce Lasting Fresh Dryer Sheets. It's the sheet. After trailing 6-0, Akron has blown this wide open with a pick six by Tyson Durant moments ago, 41-9. A couple of minutes into the fourth quarter, Akron trying to rebuild a program that has just one win, about to get its second, and here are the rebuilds most impressive over the last dozen years or so, including Bowling Green and Scott Leffler, whose team was 0-5 in 2020 during the COVID season, and told us in the middle of the year, we are going to make a bowl game this year. And guess what? The Falcons are. He's done a terrific job with that program, and it, it really has been, a, you know, a labor of love for Scott Leffler. He's one of the hardest working coaches, not only in the MAC, but in the country. He sleeps at the office until Thursday. His <laughs> wife brings him meals, and he truly lives Falcon football. He's a, a He's a fun dude to talk to, too. You know, as you know, you've had him on some games as well. It's conference calls about a half hour extends itself a bit. And <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a there's a different level of honesty with Lefty. Yes, yes. You know, and and it's not like honest 
this is how great we are. It's honest. It doesn't. If it's good or bad, I'm going to be honest about it. Sure. And that's not, of course, to say that the other coaches in the MAC aren't that way. It's just that you know, Lefty will will share it. A friend of Tom Brady, by the way, back to his Michigan days. Harrison Whaley replacing the injured Jaden Cradle, as you mentioned. Able to pick up 11 on the play. It's good to see him back. And imagine this team with uh, Ontario Brown and Whaley together again. Is not the case. Justin Lynch is the quarterback now. We'll see if Lynch uh, gets the rest of the duty here in the fourth quarter after the pick six thrown by Kremaskoli moments ago. It's a big time tackle by Victor Jones for Akron. He's played very well on that defensive front. Interesting. Redshirt senior. Yeah, interesting. Victor Jones and Ravante Holt both transferred from Wyoming. Curtis Harper, Zach Morton, the other two starters on the front, both transferred in from Syracuse. Lynch in trouble. Penalty flag. Could be a hold on the play. And he fires at the last minute. Incomplete pass. Justin Lynch's famous brother Jordan starred here at Northern Illinois for a number of years. And in fact, he actually played for Jordan at Mont Carmel and won the state championship there. 2012, I believe. Holding. Number 60. Offense. Penalty is declined. Result of the play is third down. I believe the year was 2012. Jordan Lynch finished third in the Heisman voting. Yep. The great running back here, great quarterback. Uh, that guy right there was a great running back. Here. Oh, he was. His numbers were terrific, weren't they, when he were here? Oof. When he was here? Man, he, he could run the rock. Need to pick up 12. Lynch on the move. And he's got his 12, and then some. To midfield. Thomas Hammock has a pretty good sense of humor early in the season when we had him. We're trying to figure out who's going to start a quarterback. And uh, I think he thought I was pestering a little bit during the uh, conference call. <laughs> anyway, when we hooked up again, you and I and him, this past week, he said, I'll tell you one thing before we get started. Rocky Lombardi is not starting a quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> he remembered you. Yes, and he laughed and we laughed at it too. It was, Said, so, well, we figured that out, Coach, but thank you for the verification. Uh huh. <laughs> no Hammock's team, quite good last year, but with the injuries and close losses. Personal foul, illegal blindside block, number 15, offense, 15 yard penalty, wow. remains first down. It's on Cole Tucker. Yeah. That's not good. Well, with Lynch in the game now, but Nevin Kremiscoli, you know, from an outsider's perspective, saying, well, he was the sixth quarterback, he's the fourth quarterback to start, that all sounds very difficult, but when you break it down even further, a walk-on redshirt who the majority of his practice reps is emulating the other team. You're a scout team quarterback, so you might be in the quarterback room for the install period, the game planning, but then on the field, you're not actually running your own stuff because you're running whatever Kent State or Akron or whoever that week's opponent is as a scout team quarterback. When you're thrust into the starting role, of course you're starting that week, but you've also, you're behind reps from running your stuff, the Northern Illinois offense, for the whole season because you've been running scout team. Yeah, that's well said. And Eric Eidness said three weeks ago when he started, they were about 45% of their playbook, that they felt comfortable running with Nevin Kremiscoli. They're up to 65 or 70% of that. But from an again, from an, someone outside the program, you don't realize that you're only running 70% of what you want to. You have, an, or, or less than 50% when he first started. Not not dissimilar from Akron and starting Jeff Undercuffler, where you mentioned Coach Moorhead said we have these running packages that we use all season because DJ Irons is that type of quarterback. He's more of a dual threat guy without the running ability and more of a traditional type quarterback as, with Undercuffler. You rip those pages and you throw them out. Sure. So again, reduced playbook for both offenses, I would say, um, from what they ideally would be running. 
trying to keep everybody healthy for 2023 will be uh, one of the significant things we'll need to do. That's well short of the first down, even though the catch is incomplete. And so on downs, the Zips will take over. It was a fourth and 21 as Thomas back defending for Akron. The result of the play brings up fourth down. So it's first and 10 for Akron. It was mentioned over the PA that it was fourth down, but I don't think that's right. I think Akron's got the ball. Hmm. Or would you disagree? I'm not sure. They have the punt team out there. And the punt return team, Akron's not fighting vigorously. Was it Missouri that had the fifth down, Colorado? <laughs> That's my mistake. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> was that Colorado? And <laughs> yeah, <it laughs> years <was>. ago, <laughs> the infamous fifth down. So they actually uh, threw an incomplete pass on third down, leading to fourth, and now Akron will get the football. Ron, it's on 35 with 10:42 left and a 41 to 9 lead. And how many people would have picked this as Akron coming in was a significant underdog? Yes, no, I don't think a whole lot of people would have predicted this. Jeff Undercuffler Jr. out of Brandon Mass. And check that out of New Jersey. Who stands 6'5", 230. Is 20 for 29, season best 269 for three touchdowns. Probably not a whole lot of reason to throw the ball now with Cam Wiley carrying out of bounds. Well, next year, Joe Moorhead's going to have some interesting competition at the QB spot. DJ Irons obviously will be or should be the favorite as he recovers from injury, but Undercuffler is making a statement, and as they bring in a recruit, that may even change as well. Yes, Steele Wassel from Oklahoma. Interesting story. That man, Joe Moorhead, when he was at Oregon last year, was recruiting Steele Wassel to play there, and when he... Oh. Daniel George and a catch! Undercuffler with a bomb to Daniel George. So the three receivers for Akron have wrecked havoc on Northern Illinois. And again, just getting behind the defensive backs. Just, you know, wide open down the field. Take now, a look at that. Hardly to start ball. a controversy, but would this be piling on, or is this like, it really doesn't matter at this point? Well, you know, Bill Belichick famously said, it's not my job to stop my offense. Yeah, that's true. You know, I mean, if, if, if your guys are running wide open down the field, you throw them the football. Sure. Price breaks a couple of tackles and carries for eight. Been able to shred Northern Illinois' defense ever since the second quarter began. It was one 6 nothing Huskies, hard to believe. Under nine minutes to play. This will be the Zips' first win in the Mid-American Conference this season. And should give them a bounce to their step when they head to Buffalo on Friday. Play a one o'clock game. Here's Price again. Ooh, nice play defensively. And the Huskies have come up with the ball. Gonna be down at the 17 yard line. Is it Ray Thomas? Ray now, Thomas stripped the football. Yeah. Now both sides are starting to get into it. Because we're going to have to have some separation down on the field. A lot happened on that play. Should so Ray, be Huskies football. There's a flag, by the way, but that was thrown was, after the return. So here's Ray Thomas, number four. He's going to strip the football, although his knee was down. That'll be interesting to see if they look at it. If you yeah. get that same camera angle, it looked like Price's knee, may have, his right knee was down. And then, 
Yeah, and that's when the shenanigans picked up. Nate Williams. So look at the right knee. I don't know if you could see it. Right there, his knee's down. Well, let's see if that's up for review here, then. And Thomas gets it, and then he gets hit. <laughs> the ball, the Michael, ball. Michael Kennedy will pick it up here, number five. Yep. And then I think we're going to see uh, Nate Williams, 76, push him out of bounds right there. And that's what, that's what drew the flag. And everybody's been sent to their respective bench. You think the knee's down here? I do. Right. Take a look. Down. Ball's not out. Ball's out now. Yeah. It's close. It is close. It is close. The ruling on the field is a fumble recovered by the defense. After the play, there are multiple unsportsmanlike likes on both teams. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Defense, number 38. His first of the game. Dead ball, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 13 of Akron, his first of the game, and number 76 of Akron, his first of the game. Those penalties all offset. It's Northern Illinois' ball, first down. So that's Nate Williams, the quarterback under Cuffler, and Nick Routine on the other side, all with the 15 yard, well, won't the be 15 yard penalties because they offset each other. Recovered by the defense, offset themselves. is under further review. By well, the way, this uh, fumble is going to be is being reviewed as we speak, but the penalties, well, they won't be enforced because they basically wash each other out, have been uh, already signaled to benches. And if you get another one of those, you're gone. But in the meantime, I guess the focus is going to be, was this a fumble? It's tough to tell when that knee's actually down if the ball's moving. I mean, I, I would not be surprised if there's not conclusive evidence enough to overturn this and it stays northern illinois ball because right there it's just such a bang bang play it's hard to tell with his legs if he when his knee actually hits the turf a replay communicator is harold Beatty and the replay official to make the call is don bondi those guys were jolly on the spot in the first quarter having to and to call their name, but now this, with the chance of the ball being reversed to the other side on the strip by Thomas. It's a it's, nice play by number four. Yeah, look, he has it here. This is, it's been a, an afternoon of big man highlights on the Yes, defensive it has. Side. And it's about time, some people are probably saying. <laughs> <laughs> it's about time. Enough about the wide receivers and quarterbacks, yeah. you know? So was Michael Kennedy in position to run this back? After review, it was determined the ball carrier's knee was down prior to the ball coming loose. Therefore, it's Akron's ball. First down, 10 yards to go at the 11-yard line. Again, the penalty's all offset. Good call, Ryan Kavanaugh. Yeah, um, thank you. Once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting to, you know, have you... Acknowledge their, yeah. their niceties. Yep, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> well, that was uh, a whole lot of extracurricular activities for a two yard carry. Yeah, and Akron keeps the football at the 11. Clock restarts. Under Cuffler looking to the end zone, and he'll just throw this away. The most points. Akron has scored in the season up till now was 34 in a loss to Bowling Green. And the most points Northern Illinois has allowed up to this point was 52 to Toledo. So Legal procedure being called. False start. Number 18. 
offense. Five yard penalty, second down. Shockey Jacques Louis, who I think has one of the better college football names out there. Just names, period. Yeah. Blake Hawk running in inside a 10 now. Here's Price straight ahead. This has to be agony, though, for Husky parents. Here for Senior Day, hoping to see their kids celebrate their final game with a victory. And not only are they going to lose this game, but they're going to lose by a lot. And it's cold. I mean, it's, it's a rough way to go, and you got to feel for the families, I think. Yeah, I think that's right. You know, it certainly isn't the way you want to go out. But, you know, when talking to Coach Hammock this week, so what's at stake? He said, look, half the teams are going to win and half the teams are going to lose, and you want to be one of those teams that wins. That's how you want to go out. I think his exit interviews are going to be very interesting <laughs> with all his players individually. Under Cuffwood to the end zone, and it's broken up at the last minute. And that's real nice coverage. Trying to get to Caleb Anderson, who has four catches, no touchdowns on the season. Anderson, a really good looking six foot four, 225 pound sophomore out of Brandon High School in Mississippi. Leads to a 31 yard attempt by Corey Smeagle. For the 44th point of the game for Akron. After being outscored 6 nothing in the first, a 44-3 advantage for the Zips. They're going to win for the second time this year. To build the all-new Honda CRV Hybrid, you took everything you love about the CRV and kicked it up a notch with excellent fuel efficiency and greater power for a CRV unlike any before. Adventure confidently with the most fuel efficient full line automaker in America. The all new CRV and CRV Hype. Part of the Honda line of rugged vehicles. Cheesiest chain for the cheesiest cheese. Give me that, you don't need it. To be the cheesiest, gotta snatch that chain. Wait, what, how'd you. We need another chain. Cheese It, official sponsor of the college football playoff. Welcome back. Seven minutes to go. 44-9 Akron in overtime. Kent State has rallied and leading Buffalo 30-27. to If that holds up, Akron can not only spoil Northern Illinois' senior day, it can spoil Buffalo's run to a bowl game. As the Bulls still need to get to six wins, they've got five as we speak. And by the way, that game now has gone final. Kent State 30, Buffalo 27. The Bulls are stuck on five wins and will have to beat Akron on Friday to become bowl eligible. Wow. After leading by 14 points over Kent State. And this was a Buffalo team that was atop the MAC not too long ago. That is a shocking result. Lynch to the sidelines.
Well, compared to last year, the bowl eligible teams of the MAC have been diminished. Right now, five. Buffalo trying to become the sixth. They got as many as eight eligible last season. Lynch, a little bit of trouble here on second down and throwing and incomplete. Six wins get you in unless you play two FCS teams. In the case of the Bulls now, they're going to have to beat Akron on Friday. So the Zips are in a kind of a fun spot here at the end of the year. Not only winning big today, but now they get to spoil somebody else's party. And for Coach Moorhead in this roster, you know, off the heels of this very impressive win, to be able to ha have the kids and your team be motivated to take, to, to knock off Buffalo, because now you're playing for something. Yes. You're playing to prevent them from making a bowl. Also, you go into, you know, you, you end the season, if you're Akron, with two big wins. Oh boy. Yeah, that, that touched one of the down linemen. And that's gonna be Huskies football, I think. Yep. Goes as a turnover, Routine there, number 38. Called his name enough today, why not some good fortune, huh? Routine has been playing very, very well. Playing hard. And this is just one of those unfortunate the on the bounces. Oh, it hits the back. Is that the kick was touched by the receiving team member, then recovered by the kickers. First down, Northern Illinois. That is the fifth turnover of the game. Akron has received three turnovers. Northern Illinois now two. Just an unfortunate turn of events for Akron because, you know, they've got a player blocking, and all of a sudden the ball hits him in the back, and routine recovers. Justin Lynch, back at quarterback, didn't have much of a rest there. Justin, by the way, we mentioned the younger brother of Jordan Lynch, who went on to coach at Mont Carmel, and he actually scored five touchdowns, we're speaking of Justin, in the state championship game for his older brother. The game which Mont Carmel won. Yeah, that's cool. And the older brother replaced a legend there. Beautiful catch by Fabian McCray on the sidelines. It's Northern Illinois now, closer to the end zone. It's a yeah. nice pass by Justin Lynch. Lynch started his collegiate career at uh, Temple, transferred in. Five and a half minutes remaining, trying to get their first touchdown of the game of the Huskies. Just high on that, you can see the release. Darian Lewis there in coverage, he's been a real standout for the Zips defensively. He's a nickel player, isn't he not? He is, yeah, he's their nickel back, which really, you know, in college football it's like the nickels a starter yeah you know you play five defensive backs a lot kind of a hybrid too you can sneak them up on that front four if you need to now lynch is going to be brought down back at the 20. You mentioned victor jones just moments ago did you not he is yeah it's, i complimented him for his play and look at the job he does coming off the left edge there's a flag now referee hudson threw the flag so the man with the white hat after we'll the, the play call. is over Unsportsmanlike conduct. Number 44, defense. Penalties enforced half the distance to the goal line. Automatic first down. So was that some taunting or uh, glaring or staring the over the player? Or what was that? I don't know if it was the combination of that and the dancing perhaps. We'll see when it comes out. There he is. And then there, he walks away and here's the dance. Yep. And there's the flag. So it leads to a first down for the Huskies and probably a conversation for Jones <laughs> on the sidelines. You are probably right because uh, that's where he's at right now. Brian Johnson comes in, makes the tackle. Second and goal. Lynch to keep. What a nice move, but could not shake the defender. That's just Lord Bodeg. Transfer from Michigan State. Brings us to a third and goal. Huskies still looking for that first touchdown of the game. Game started well for them. A couple of drives that led to points. 
After that, Avalanche of Akron points. Lynch flushed out and to run and pushed out of bounds. Boating again, getting over and pushing Lynch out of bounds. Just nobody open downfield as they commit more players to coverage. And looks like Coach Hammock's going to run the field goal unit back out there for their fourth field goal attempt of the day. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? I, you know, it, it, this is a tough call for a coach. You know, what? there's 340 left in the game. Yeah, you're not going to win, certainly. Right, so, so what it, do you do? Yeah. Wow. Yep, snuck it in there. So John Richardson's been the offensive player of the game. He's accounted for all 12 Northern Illinois points. We'll come back and wrap up the final three and a half minutes of our final game of the back season in a moment. When you're ready to go, but static says, whoa. Try bounce lasting fresh dryer sheets. More freshness, more softness, less static, less wrinkles. Yeah, it's the sheet. New bounce lasting fresh dryer sheets. It's the sheet. Cheesiest chain for the cheesiest cheese. Give me that, you don't need it. To be the cheesiest, gotta snatch that chain. Wait, what, how'd you? We need another chain. Cheese it, official sponsor of the college football playoff. Welcome back. Just about ready to put close on this game. Akron next year in non conference play will play at Temple to start the year, then at Kentucky and at IU following the game, home game against Morgan State. And as you know, the Zips still have a game left in this season next Friday to try to spoil Buffalo's bid. To for a bowl berth. We'll take a look at Northern Illinois' schedule in a little bit. Off the onside kick out of bounds. Meanwhile, for the Huskies, BC will start the year. Then SIU at home, a money game at Nebraska on the 16th. Matt Rule is the rumored the candidate the to get that job. The and then Tulsa the ball. on Fire September 23rd. No, it wasn't a Kent State that played not one, not two, but three big money games this year against uh, some uh, heavily weight opponents. Oklahoma, Georgia. Three, two, five. And that was, uh, and you have to wonder how much of an effect that had on them because there was really high expectations for Kent State this year. It's just going on the road and playing monsters like that week yeah. after week is it's just tough. It's good for the coffers, maybe not good for the team, right? No, well, Mike New had one of the more classic comments when we chatted with him earlier this year. It was at a time when they were set Ball to play start. NIU. Number 52, offense, five yard penalty, first down. And it turned out Ball State had just added Georgia to the schedule next year, and we asked Mike. Mike's a pretty candid dude, too, and said, well, what do you think about that? You know, the number one team on the planet. I said, well, um, they asked me. I said, I'd rather play Army. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that's not my decision, and, of course, that's going to be worth a couple million dollars to the Ball State Cardinals coffers. Timeout. Northern Illinois. All right, Jankowski now the, the backup half. quarterback in the game. 30-second timeout. Please put three minutes, 20 seconds on the game clock. Three, two, zero, And NIU will use a timeout. Thank you. With the idea of getting the ball back. Yeah, well, I was a little, you know, you asked about the field goal attempt at the end, and then they came out and went for an onside kick, which surprised me a little bit. And now taking timeouts. You know, in these situations, there's always that consideration of what message are we sending our team. Sure. 
what do we want them to, to oh, think? And it's that, Which we don't know, of course. No, but, it, you know, that when I see something like this in this situation, it's the message usually is that we're going to play to the whistle and we're going to, you know, continue to keep fighting. Jankowski just throws the ball away as he was being chased. Profit brings up a third down. Huskies hold here and they will get the football back. Officials huddling and now flag being thrown at the last second. Oh, there it's going to be um, intentional grounding, I believe. Intentional grounding, number eight, offense. He was out of the pocket, however, the pass did not get back to the line of scrimmage and there was no receiver in the area. Penalty is a loss of down from the spot of the foul, third down. Jankowski in relief of undercuffler and a huge afternoon for Akron. What's interesting is you see him try to get, he's just trying to get rid of the football. Caleb Anderson was down blocking downfield, but uh, <laughs> wasn't in the vicinity, you might say. Kind of a fun time of the year right now is 22 Ronald. Uh, Charles Callum. Yeah. Personal foul. Yep, Callum, sorry. Horse collar tackle. Number 29, defense. 15 yards from the end of the run, automatic first down. Knighton picks up the personal foul, so that'll move the football 15 yards further down, and Northern Illinois will not get the football yet. And unfortunately, it's just been this type of a game for Northern Illinois. Well, Kellum did the stiff arm, and then... See what Knighton did? Yeah. I mean, it looked like, unless the right hand was inside, it looked like in the back of the jersey. Okay. First and 10, 31-yard line. It's Blake Hester getting a chance to run the football. The call moments ago was a horse collar. First, you're going to see a stiff arm by the running back. I think the right hand gets in there. Okay. Yeah, because the left hand was on the back in the, the middle of the jersey. And now the Zips will use some more time. No reason to hurry to the line of scrimmage, even though you got your backups in, and the backups certainly want to contribute a touchdown. How about that broken tackle? Callum. Second carry. Nice job by Callum, Charles Callum, making people miss getting up the sideline. Down to 90 seconds. Blake Hester, the running back. Next to Ryan Jankowski. And Hester. And that will bring us under a minute. Next stop for Akron, Buffalo, New York, and a chance to end the season with two consecutive wins and stop the Bulls from making bowl eligibility for Northern Illinois. Some much needed interviews with the head coach to find out what lies there for 2023. And this will be a kneel down. Yep, getting into an offense's favorite formation, the victory formation. Well, Akron hasn't had much practice at it, but maybe next year the Zips will be on the upswing and we'll have plenty of opportunities to perform that. A nice bus ride home, albeit long, but still enjoyable for Akron and Joe Moorhead. The 
And Joe Moorhead, you can almost feel things turning around at Akron, Jim. Sure. This performance was a good one. We'll see how they end the season next week at Buffalo. But for that man, Joe Moorhead, first MAC conference win as a head coach. And I'm with you. This could be the turnaround. They it just feels a little different bit more when they play Buffalo on Friday. Yeah, but I wouldn't be surprised if they head to Buffalo and they come away with a win based on what I see here. There is, you know, just as far as the talent on the edges and in the backfield, I don't know how this is a one win team coming into this game. Sure. They've got some real weapons and their defense, they played with great intensity throughout the course of this game. There's Nick Routine and Shamar Thornton in the uh, Northern Illinois picture. Routine had a really nice game. He was one of the standouts for this Northern Illinois defense. Bright spot where, frankly, there just weren't a whole lot. Well, that will do it. Started as a promising day for Northern Illinois. Winds up a huge day, though, for the Akron Zips. For Ryan Cavanaugh, I'm Jim Barber. So long from Husky Stadium on the campus of Northern Illinois. Akron 44, Northern Illinois 12. All games airing on the ESPN networks. Are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN. So long, everyone.